Wes Bloomfield coming into this game four and three and three overall. Oxford coming in four and two overall. And the OAA standings, really interesting setup tonight. Oxford two and one in the OAA red. West Bloomfield one and two with a victory. They would be tied in the rankings. Rochester Adams two and two in the OAA red division following their loss to Oxford last week. And uh, and Clarkston two and one. Lake Orion one and two. They go up against each other. So a Laker win tonight over Oxford, and a win by Lake Orion over Clarkston tomorrow night means every team, all five in the OAA red division, would finish two and two and have a share of the title. As you see, the final time for the seniors taking the field at West Bloomfield High School. Here come the Lakers. Yeah. I mean, really, just has to be surreal running out of that tunnel for the last time. Wait, you see him waving the flag. It's just going to be huge to see how they come out firing on their first drive, whether it's offense or defense, just seeing how aggressive they are. I well, give an early game shout out to our crew out on site tonight, along with us, Jared Clark, our producer, and Dom Catoni, our camera operator, with that great entering shot for the Lakers as we prepare to hear from the Laker Express and the singing of our national anthem. Senior night for them, as well at West Bloomfield High School, as they are led by their seniors as well. Not being directed by the director, being directed by one of their own, as we highlight those that will be graduating in 2025 on their final home game at the 50-yard line with the Laker Express at West Bloomfield High School for what should be an incredible night. We'll listen in in just a moment as you see these seniors standing at midfield Ladies ready to graduate tonight. At this their time, final performance at West Bloomfield High School before an incredible, special Thursday night edition of West Bloomfield Laker football. We'll tune in now as they sing the Star Spangled Banner. And Laker Express with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner brings us to the beginning of football night in West Bloomfield a day earlier than usual because of the holiday. Tonight's ball game, a Thursday night edition and a really good opponents coming in, Matt, to, to finalize this OAA Red Division schedule for the year for West Bloomfield. The Oxford Wildcats will have really hit their stride with this senior laden team in 2024. Yeah, honestly, if you ask me, it's a much better watch than the Thursday night football game the NFL is offering tonight. But a huge game for both teams is, you know, Oxford can really put a stamp on their season and the run that they've been able to go on and win the OAA for themselves. So it's just going to be interesting to see how they come out and how physical they are on both offense and defense as well. So you see Justin Ward and the Lakers special teams front coming out. Getting the ball lined up at the middle hash at the 40-yard line. They will kick the ball off to start tonight. Oxford will receive the ball with Jake Champagne and Owen Pavlock back to return their kicks. Most of them being returned this season by Jake Champagne. We had that game-winning touchdown late in the fourth quarter last week at home on the big blue turf against Rochester Adams. But 12 minutes on for the first quarter, 48 for the ball game. Here comes Justin Ward, ready to kick this one off and put an end to this OAA Red Division schedule that's been back and forth 
for every team in the league. Here we go. Pickoff down to the three yard line, returned by Oxford up to the 15 to the 20, breaking free at the 20 and forward to the 23 yard line on the return it, for the Oxford Wildcats, Owen Pavla. A uh, nice return there for a minute. It almost got scary for the Lakers. And honestly, you rarely see returns off of the ward. And that was another boom and kick. He caught that at the one yard line able to bring that up to the 35 yard line and give this Oxford offense good field position for their first drive. Wildcats coming off a pretty wild game last week, 18 to 17 victory as Jack Hendricks under center to begin this drive. One of the backfield is Johnson, play action. Hendricks looking forward, zips it just a few feet outside of the range of his intended receiver, Liam O'Neill. Yeah, not much room. There it looked like he, that was the design route on that play, no matter what, that he was going to be going to that curl route, but not much of a window there between Pecor, Shakespeare, and Allos. So he kind of just puts that one in the dirt and puts it somewhere where either his receiver is going to come up with it or, you know, it's an incompletion, but a smart throw by Hendricks nonetheless. Hendricks in his second season as a starter in his junior season with trips lined up in a bunch to the left, one wide to the right on second down. Throw outside in the flat to... To the 40 yard line he'll go and he'll go down. Eli Carpenter on the grab for the Oxford Wildcats. Yeah, just almost like a run play, just a quick Carpenter bubble screen out of that slot and Carpenter does a good job of keeping his legs moving and makes it a very manageable third down here for Oxford. Early on in the first quarter, 0-0 at West Bloomfield High School between the Lakers and the visiting Wildcats. Both of these teams got one thing on their mind tonight, the OAA Red Division title. If Oxford wins this game, they are in position to win the OAA Red, or at least share it with Clarkston. Two split out to the right for Hendricks. They're going to direct snap it instead to Johnson. He'll go up to the 44-yard line for Oxford. A little bit of trickery there from Zach Line in this offense. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a favorable spot for them, too. It's going to be close. They may bring the sticks out to spot it, but, you know, very... I think they got that one right out of longest yard with Adam Sandler, but a very clever play right there on third down. Instead of taking the measure, they'll move the chains up. First down for the Oxford Wildcats with the tip of the football on their 45-yard line, marching forward toward Laker territory. Hendricks under center, one man in the backfield is Johnson. Flag as he snaps the ball. Johnson outside, up to the 50, down to the 45, and advancing forward to the 43. We'll see how that laundry affects that excellent run from the captain. Yeah, my guess is it may be a legal formation or a legal shift or something, I'm not sure. But that came right as the ball was snapped, right at the line of scrimmage, so I wonder who it's gonna be on. Johnson, okay. See the officiating crew call a procedure penalty that will set the Wildcats back. They'll try it again on a first and long. Taking it back and trying it all over again, really back from where they had begun that last play that led to that first down advantage for the Laker defense. So they'll start again. It'll be first down and 15. Just inside the right hash at the 40-yard line. Oxford moving right to left across your screen and across the radio dial. So they begin this, this ball game going south to north at West Bloomfield High School, heading toward that north end zone where a little bit beyond that this weekend, the fire department open house Sunday, noon to 3 p.m. Tune in for our coverage as well on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Hendricks handoff running outside of Luke Johnson up to the original line of scrimmage and past the 50 to the 49. Yeah, similar amount of yardage to what he gained on that first carry. And you know, already off to a strong start by the look of it, but phenomenal run right there for Johnson to get them back right on schedule on second down. Helps to erase that penalty there, a real good playmaker in Luke Johnson. 114 yards of total offense and one touchdown against Adams last week. And, had, is a, and now over 700 yards total offense on the season. The second down handoff. Johnson again outside, breaking free, past the line to gain and up to the 35 yard line. Here he goes, having another big game early on in the Oxford 42. 
Yeah, that is really where the Lakers have struggled more than anything in these OAA games that they've lost, stopping the run. And so far, that's on this drive, they've really struggled to stop Johnson on these carries, and he's really gashing them up so far. And moves the chains forward for the Oxford Wildcats. First down at the Laker 35-yard line. Early on in this first period at West Bloomfield High School, 0-0. Man in motion left to right into a bunch. Shotgun snap, Hendricks hands it off to Johnson. Up to the 30, bashes forward to the 20, bashes forward again. Wow, what a run from Luke Johnson, another first down. Yeah, I mean, coming out and running with authority on this opening drive, Johnson, and just, he is thriving so far, and so far, it's just looking like the Lakers are just gonna have to toughen up more than anything on some of these runs. If they're gonna wanna win this game, they're going to have to put a lid on this run game. It comes from a lot of things, that forward progress attitude for 42. He practices like he plays. That's what Coach Line, the head coach of these Wildcats, credits for the success of their senior running back. And off again, Johnson going to take it left. Got a big opening and down inside the 10 before he's finally bashed to the ground by Vegas Say and Jonathan Edison. Yeah, I mean, Johnson has been hard to bring down tonight. And it makes it even harder to bring them down when it's your secondary, your defensive backs being the first guys to make contact with them as opposed to your defensive linemen and linebackers. The Oxford offensive line so far is just pushing this Lakers defensive front around and just giving them lanes to just flow right through. I haven't even seen the arm talent yet really on display from Jack Hendricks. One throw so far early on this ball game. He's going to be first and goal at the Laker eight. Hendricks under center, handoff to Johnson. He counters inside the five and down to the two with forward progress and a reach. They'll probably put him right there at the goal line or just inside the, the two yard line. Exactly what happens. One and a half yard line for Oxford as they are close to scoring on these Lakers early. Yeah, but there's been times, you know, so far this season where this Lakers defensive front has really, you know, turned up at the goal line and stifled some offenses. It's going to be interesting to, here to see if this is where they eventually put a cap on that run game. 0-0 zero, zero presently. That could change very soon as now Andrew Barrett, the fullback, opens up a gap for Luke Johnson who gets in. Touchdown, Oxford. And so far, you know, this Oxford team looking like they're coming out with a bit more energy. And it's going to be huge for that Lakers offense and Bo Jackson to come out and match this or these points. Gives Oxford an early 6-0 lead as Drew Cady will come out to kick the PAT. A really versatile player for this Wildcats squad. Some pedigree also. His brother Jay kicked for the team last season. Gets the snap to hold. The kick is up. And the kick is good, just like that. Early on in the in this ball game, it is seven nothing in favor of the Wildcats. Now the Lakers got to come out and do something they did pretty well last week in the first half, answering their opponent's scores. Yeah, they it's huge for them to come out here and match this point or those points. But for the Lakers' offense, you got to try and stay as calm as possible, especially Bo Jackson, because we've seen at times where. You know, where they're trying to move the ball too fast, and next thing you know, he throws into tight coverage and the ball's picked off. Just try and stay on schedule, stay within the offense, and I think the Lakers can match those points that the Oxford offense just put up. Wildcats will kick this one off to the West Bloomfield Lakers, where Elijah Durham and Cam Flowers have both been excellent in their kick returns this season. Flowers averaging 65 yards per return, although most of these have been from Elijah Durham and his 37 yards per kickoff return. We saw a couple weeks back a 100 yard kick return for a touchdown by Cameron Flowers. That would be quite a lot of lightning early on in this game to tie it back up against Oxford, who's up 7 0 here in the first period. Line drives going to boom way back in the side the five and returned by Flowers out to the 15 yard line left side to the 20 still on his feet up to the 24 yard line just shy of the 25 outside the left hash and it looked like a flag flew in there at the end of the play too so my guess is yep holding so back up the Lakers inside of the 20 to start this drive that's just 
one of those mistakes that we were talking about that you can't make, especially early on in the game, and put yourself in a hole. This Oxford defense, easier said than done to get up against them as you see the call come in for a hole. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And like you said, it is a penalty from the spot of the foul. So it's it's not going to bring them back from just shy of the 24-yard line. It's going to bring them back from where the penalty happened. That's going to be the Lakers way inside their 10. It's half the distance, as you heard from the PA announcer tonight in the background. So now the Lakers, instead of starting at their 24, 25 yard line, they're gonna be starting at their seven yard line instead. Bo Jackson, the quarterback in the shotgun, one in the backfield and two split out to his right side, man in motion. Snap to Jackson, screen pass outside to that man in motion. James caught up to the 10, up to the 20 yard line and up to the 23 yard line will move the chains and some early thunder and lightning from Devin James and Bo Jackson. And you mentioned players that have stepped Jackson up that you didn't necessarily expect to have as much of an impact as we've seen this season. And James is one of those. He has been tr a tremendous surpri surprise for the Lakers this year and has flashed when he's gotten the ball in space. James coming into this game with two receptions on the season, but five really nice carries for 60 yards in these first six weeks. First down and 10 for the Lakers at their 22-yard line. Shotgun snap to Jackson, will hand the ball off. Outside, Josh Tate to the 30, up to the 35, and skipping toward the 40, just shy as he rolls out of bounds. Yeah, I have a very strong feeling that we are going to see a running back duel here today between Tate and Johnson, and right there on that run is something that we've seen from Tate all year, just exploding out of the line of scrimmage and getting to that second level, and right there picks up another first down for the Lakers. Ball is placed at the 38-yard line of the Lakers, approaching midfield, another first down, two in a row to start off this drive. That is also their 40th rushing first down of the season. Jackson out of the shotgun with James in motion again. Hands it off to Tate. He'll get to the line of scrimmage and not about much more as he is tackled by Andrew Barrett. Yeah, you know, that's, it's going to be a bit of a push and pull battle today for the Lakers. A very physical, very strong Oxford team. And I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of plays like that, but it's going to be up to Josh Tate and this offensive line to remain confident so that way they're still able to rip off some runs. So for the first time, we'll see second down for the Lakers. Tate in the backfield alongside Bo Jackson. Again, same formation, same play set up as James goes in motion, and Jackson will take it himself. The gunslinger on the ground, the quarterback outside of the 44-yard line on the opposite side of the field, and just like that, here come the Lakers in plus territory. Yeah, that's one thing that has definitely improved with Jackson as he's gotten more snaps as a starter in back there as the quarterback. It's his quarterback's pocket presence and his willingness to just, you know, abandon the pocket and scramble and pick up the yards over there. Not a whole lot of rushes on the season, just two coming into this game for number eight, but... Takes one there and another first down. Handoff to Tate this time. He'll go forward to the 44 and Vance up to about the 43 yard line on first down. Yeah, and really that just adds that much more to this, you know, RPO or option offense that the Lakers have been Take running as a play. When Bo Jackson just tucks in and runs like that, it just shows that, you know, even though typically Jamal Shakespeare is the quarterback that's going to come in and run, Bo Jackson is definitely very capable of running the ball as well. Ball now at the 43-yard line of Oxford. Shotgun snap to Jackson and a whistle as that play is snapped and the ball is thrown to Flowers. Yeah, it looks like a timeout may have been called. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. The only thing better than taking away a timeout from your opponent is making them jump and advancing forward. That's what the Lakers do after that penalty moves the ball up to the Oxford 38-yard line. All they got to do. Let's get to that 36 for the first down. Looked Second like there, and three. Looked like there may have been some yards there, though, on that screen to Flowers, unfortunately. Trips to the left and Elijah Durham wide right. Hand off to Josh Tate. He'll go left side, skip on inside, get right to the line to gain. 
Referee standing directly on the 36 yard line of Oxford. They'll place the ball with the tip on the 36. And they will move the chains. Another first down on the ground for the Lakers. Yeah, Josh Tate has pretty much been automatic this year on third and short, second and short, and short yard situations. And that has been huge for this Lakers offense that has struggled at times. First down now from the Oxford 36 in the 7 0 ball game in favor of the Wildcats in the first quarter. Draw play for Shakespeare. He's thrown down by the jersey, and there's a flag on the field after the play as Jacob Childress got him from the back of his jersey. Not going to be a defensive penalty. It's a procedure penalty instead, so not going to go the Lakers' way. All that progress from the previous penalty erased right there. Yeah, I mean, kind of a benefit for the Lakers right there. That penalty negates a, a loss on that play right there. So you save a down. You still lose the yardage that you lost, but at least you save a down. I'll set them back now to the 41-yard line. Got to get up to the 26-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Shakespeare rolling to his left side outside the pocket, trying to escape. Escapes gets to the original line and gets a first down. Jamal Shakespeare on the ground escapes Dean Rice and moves the chains. I mean, just a phenomenal scramble right there for Shakespeare. And somehow doesn't just gain yards and make a positive play out of it. Somehow picks up the first down. And as we were talking before the game, the pass blocking by this offensive line, it's huge and just bought him enough time that he was able to do that. He'll remain. It's one of the Lakers' top rushers of the season as Bo Jackson comes back in at quarterback. Twins out to the right and two in the backfield for the Lakers. Snap to Jackson. Play action, a pass outside, screen to Allos, up to the 20, inside the 15, trying to get more, gets up to about the nine yard line before he steps out of bounds. And a phenomenal block right there by Flowers helps, you know, spring that play right there to put this at the, argue, I believe, nine yard line first and set up first and goal for them. And now this Lakers offense set up right where they can do the thing that they do best, run the football. Timeout, Oxford. So here Oxford takes their first timeout of the, of the first half, the Lakers trailing seven to nothing in the first period of this ball game on Thursday night at West Bloomfield High School. Plenty to discuss on this contest alongside Zach Hilbers early, uh, later on after this ball game. We'll talk to him early on next week on This Week in Laker Football. Follow along on Civic Center TV and on 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll hear from him about this game. Preview next week, another tough matchup against the Birmingham Seaholm Maples in the penultimate game of the regular season. And then we'll also hear from some players, maybe some coaches, and preview that big game coming up this week in Laker football, only on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Play will resume with about four minutes left in the first period. Lakers down seven, but knocking on the door of the Oxford Wildcats trying to even this thing up. Hand off to Tate. He's going to go outside the 10, escapes the tackler inside the five, still pushing forward and ultimately goes down with forward progress. Put him at the five, maybe the six yard line. Dean Rice, the lead, tax, lead tackler. Yeah, it looked like Tate may get brought down at the line of scrimmage or around the line of scrimmage that play, but he somehow makes a tackler miss and picks up about four yards on that play and just a huge gain right there to keep this offense on schedule and in position to run the football. Ball placed at the five yard line near the right hash. Wildcat to Tate gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to be about it as he tries to push forward inside the five. The play terminates with forward progress. Yeah, it looked like he tried to jump on top of that pile at the end right there before he got tackled just so he could try and squeeze in a few more yards. No gain on the play brings up right there, the Oxford not fighting at all on the Wildcat and no one knows coming and just crashes the line of scrimmage. Third and goal for the Lakers. They'll still be at the five-yard line. The Lakers, 46% conversion rate on their third downs this season. And when they've gotten in the red zone, they've scored 60% of the time throughout 2024. They were 55% before week five, 45% before last week. Can they do it here? Snap to Shakespeare, up the gut, inside and into the end zone. Touchdown, WB. 
and just a very mindful run right there on that draw by Shakespeare. And he, that is one thing that he excels at as a runner more than anyone in, on this Lakers team that stands out is just his IQ of just knowing when to hit the hole and how to manipulate his blocks to help, you know, s spring them to the next level. And a huge touchdown right there to, for the Lakers to tie this game potentially with this kick. Justin Ward will come in for the PAT, a full night of football for him this week. Only played in the second half last week against Lake Orion. Came up big for the Lakers. He can tie the ball game here. A little bit of a high snap, but he gets the kick off and it goes through the uprights just like that. We are tied seven points apiece late in the first quarter at West Bloomfield High School. Just what you expected, Matt. Back and forth matchup between these two teams that have electric offenses and defenses that, look, you can get a little bit in between them. You can open up against them and score some points. But as the game gets tougher, it's only going to get more difficult for both these teams to get ahead of these defenses. Yeah, and really, the biggest thing is, can you eventually find a counter? And how do you respond to when, you know, your opponent counters what you've been doing on offense? Really, right now, what the Lakers have to do on defense more than anything is just toughen up. And that's really the best way I can say it. And just stop giving up so many long runs and just not allowing Johnson to get to the second level before being contacted whatsoever. So for the second time tonight, Justin Ward will kick this ball off from the 40-yard line toward the Oxford Wildcats. Jake Champagne and Owen Pavlock back to return the kick for Oxford. Pavlock got it the first time at a decent return. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go in this period. First quarter on a Thursday night at West Bloomfield High School. This game will have big implications for Friday night as well in the OAA Red Division. Yeah, another booming kick and a bounce at the five. The return at the three. Up to about the 15, breaking free. Oh, he's on his feet. Here he goes up to the 24-yard line. Jake Champagne recovers and makes a huge return. Yeah, that might have been a touchdown-saving tackle right there by Kylo Dickerson. And really just a phenomenal return after what looked like just a tremendous kick by Ward that confused Oxford enough to maybe put them inside the 10, but just a phenomenal job on that return right there. Pavlock, the returner on that play able to escape and get the Wildcats up to a first down at their 29. Hand off again, right side and up to about the 37 yard line. That's about it on first down for Luke Johnson. Yeah, again, you know, it looks like Oxford is gonna come out and try and run the ball with authority here today. It's gonna be up to the Lakers to, you know, step up and not allow them to do that. It's just, you know, stifle this run offense and set them off their offensive game plan and put pressure on that quarterback and passing offense. Late in the first quarter, it is a 7-7 ball game at West Bloomfield High School between the Lakers and the Wildcats. Hendricks under center with one in the backfield. You'll hand it off to Johnson yet again, up to the 35, advances forward past the 40-yard line, and gonna move the chains for the Wildcats. Yeah, one thing we saw especially Johnson's against that Birmingham Groves team was the Lakers struggle with down. counter and just pulling guards in particular. So, so far from Oxford, it's been a lot of the same story. The Lakers struggling to stop these pulling guards and just these counter plays. And so far, this Oxford team is looking to run the ball. After that run, the ball will be placed at the 47 yard line of the Wildcats on the right hash. First, it'll be a first down for the Wildcats. They'll hand it off. Johnson up the gut, just shy of the 50 yard line, gonna land at about the 49 as he's tackled by Jamal Shakespeare. That, that's the crazy thing. Both of those two guys right there. I think both so playing both three. ways a little bit and still finding a way to make plays on both sides of the ball. One minute to play here in the first quarter at West Bloomfield High School. Tied ball game, ball at the 49 yard line for Oxford. So they'll have second down coming up. Got to get to the 48, 47 yard line to move the chains. Again, Hendricks under center. Three and a bunch split out to the right side as he hands it off to Johnson with 45 seconds left. He'll get close to the line to gain, but a yard shy to set up third and one. 
Yeah, that's really one of the few times here tonight that the Lakers Johnson haven't pulled out Johnson to go for five plus yards on a carry. Setting up a huge third down right here that can get the Lakers an opportunity to get off the field and an opportunity to get off to an early loop. This would be a big stop for this Lakers offense who's had trouble so far with Jack Hendricks as we come to the end of the first period, 7-7. Ball game here at West Bloomfield High School. We'll have plenty more updates on this as the game goes on and certainly on the OAA Red Division outlook as we go forward from this game onto the Friday matchups. All eyes on Clarkston and Lake Orion tomorrow night. A, a game that really could go either way and could be what ultimately determines the OAA Red Division. If Oxford wins this game tonight, then they're looking at rooting for their rivals in Lake Orion and in order for them to have an outright championship in the OAA Red Division. If Oxford comes out with a victory and Clarkston wins that game tomorrow night, it would be a two-way tie for the OAA Red Division. Now, things go the Lakers' way tonight and Lake Orion wins tomorrow. It is everybody's championship in the regular season, so that's what we're really looking at. And the Lakers and the Wildcats they are the first of a very big couple of nights to cap off the regular season in division matchups for these teams. The Lakers will see Seaholm and Roseville coming up and Wildcats will have two home games. Oak Park and Macomb, Dakota as we begin the second period. Hendricks a handoff right back up to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. Sets up, a, sets up a fourth down Johnson for the Wildcats. No and, and the way that they've been running the ball, it's going to be two. interesting to see if they go for this here, if they try and pin the Lakers back deep. But a huge stop right there for the Lakers. And they seem to be pinning their ears back and going all in on the run. Fourth down and two as Oxford talks this over. Big implications on this play as they... Make a substitution, send A.J. Krupa off the field. Get the right personnel out there. Take their time on this play clock. Try to move the chains. Hendricks out of the shotgun. Two split out to either side, one in the backfield. Wildcat up to Johnson. He's going to get close, but he's not going to get there. The Lakers push him back, and it's a huge stop for the L boys. Yeah, it looked like... Yeah, I believe it might have been Allos right there that looked like he was going to get back there right away but got picked up by a tight end or tackle. But the Lakers do a good job of just filling in and two or three more Lakers right there, pick them up and bring them down about maybe half a yard, a yard past line of scrimmage. But a huge stop right there on fourth down for the Lakers. And now this offense, you know, it's been humming these past two weeks. So it's going to be huge right here to see if they can get some points and get off to a lead. So now the Lakers have a chance to take the point advantage themselves. Early in the second period, tie ball game at seven. And the Lakers will begin this drive in very favorable territory at their 49-yard line on the left hash. Shotgun snap to Jackson. Going to step up in the pocket. Escapes the tackler past the 50, the 40. And out of bounds, just shy at the 41. Again, some escapability from the quarterback. Not typically the kind of quarterback that takes it on the ground himself, but has proven time and time again in these last few weeks he can make those big plays. Yeah, like you said, he, he doesn't necessarily like to run the ball. It's not his first, you know, thought or first interest, but he's a very capable runner and right there moves the sticks for the second time tonight. Puts the Lakers in plus territory at the Oxford 41. Shotgun snap to Jackson, hand off to Tate. Skips inside and up to about the 36 yard line. And again, when Bo Jackson or Shakespeare are back there running the ball like they have been so far tonight, it just makes Josh, Josh Tate in the run game that much down dangerous down or Gibson that much six. dangerous because you, ne you don't know who it's coming from and you can't just game plan or key in on the running back. And this Lakers offense these past few weeks is starting to you know, explode. The second down, about five for the Lakers. Empty backfield for Bo Jackson. Trips to the right. Two split out to the left are Tate and Durham. Jackson got a good pocket. Looking to the left, and it is caught and out of bounds. Josh Tate, the receiver, just inside the 35. 
and Jackson's just a beautiful job today. creating that pocket right there by that Brings offensive line just giving him all the time to eventually it looked like he was looking downfield at first eventually come back in and deliver a strike to Tate to make this a third manager Lakers up to the 34 yard line of Oxford three yards to go to move the chains they got to get to the 31 7 7 ball game early on in the second period on senior night at West Bloomfield High School Tate and the Wildcat snap they will skip inside after going to the left and get up to the 31 that'll be enough to move the chains for the Lakers yeah, and again in those short yardage situations it is just huge having a player like Tate to go to and pick up those yardage because you know he is going to make that first guy miss or break that first tackle almost every time Joshua Tate huge for the Lakers last week against Lake Orion an emphatic game for him a 200 yards on the ground four touchdowns that doubled his season total so far as he is now running away in the race for the touchdown leaders for the Lakers at eight on the season they will call it fourth and short Wildcat here comes Tate again this time he'll get it escapes Johnson and company in the backfield and moves the chains for the Lakers on fourth down. Yeah, a tremendous job right there to just beat him to the edge and pick up that first down. It looked like they had it sniffed out once again, but Tate just so hard to bring down and that burst that he has and the acceleration that he has out of the backfield proving or paying dividends once again. As he converts on fourth down, nine and a half to play in the half. Snap to Jackson, rolls outside the pocket, escapes and gets a throw off to the 25. Jay Nalos all the way home. Touchdown, WB. And I mean, just a tremendous throw by Bo Jackson right there. A risky one at that, but a tremendous throw. Delivers a strike to Alos, who takes it to the house. But again, more of what we've seen from Bo Jackson these past few weeks, moving and getting it off it, off the, or out of the pocket and delivering on throws. And just like that, all that excitement and it's coming back. You heard it in the background from the officiating crew. If you did, an illegal block in the back will negate the touchdown for West Bloomfield. They will have to try all over again. A massive loss, not only in the scoreboard, but on the field as that's going to set them back all the way at, their thir at the 36-yard line. And it's going to set up a massive, massive loss for the Lakers. Out of the shotgun. Jackson will step outside the pocket to the right, looking up the field. Got to throw off and bat it away as he intended to get that to Elijah Durham. And instead, it got knocked away by Seth Tabert. Yeah, Tabert right there, right on Durham's hip. Had to be a perfect throw. But, you know, hard to deliver that on the run sometimes. Now setting the Lakers up here with second. Second down now will set the Lakers up, having to get to the 19-yard line from the 36 of Oxford. 7-7 seven, seven ball game in the second period. Second and 17 for the L boys with trips to the right. James in motion left to right. Here comes Jackson, screen, Devin James. He's going to escape inside the tackler to the 30-yard line and get up to about the 27. Yeah, a good job of reversing his field right there. James, you know, not, he could tell right there that he wasn't going to be able to pick up much if he kept on going to the outside. Burns the defender by reversing his fields and picks up a good amount of yardage to make this a very manageable third in about six, five or six yards. It'll be a friendly marking for him at the 36-yard line. That sets up third down and short for the Lakers. Man in motion again is James. He'll go back to his original spot. Jackson looking way up the field, looking to the end zone, looking to Durham. Touchdown, WB. They get those seven back. Dropped it right in the bucket, and Durham shushes the defense in response. It's just a phenomenal throw. Looked like he might have been able to deliver that throw to two Lakers right there. But Durham comes down with the ball, just a perfectly placed throw over the defender's head. And just phenomenal. And again, a penalty will erase that from the scoreboard. 
This time it's a hole. The Lakers going back even further. They had two chances to take a lead, and now not only are they going to go back to where they were after the previous penalty, lose another yard on top of that. Going to be at their at the Oxford 37-yard line. Only good thing about that is it remains third down. I'd expect them to try and run something to get back into field goal range here, maybe. With 8.36 to go in the half in this 7-7 ball game. Shotgun snap. Jackson looking for it all. Air mail! And overhead of Elijah Durham, he wanted a penalty as he was closely guarded in the end zone, but not going to get the, the laundry there, and they will set up fourth down. Jackson's kneeling on the coverage right there, and it looks like Hilders want to, wants the flag there as well. I, I just I don't think the throw was close enough to where they're going to throw a flag for that. Maybe there was some holding and some hand stuff off the camera that we didn't see, but just huge right there, to, you know, because now the Lakers aren't in field goal range, and, and they're a bit of in no man's land. Do you punt? Maybe they do a pooch kick like we've seen the pet or a few times over the season. But, you know, fourth and 15 outside of field goal range, what do you do? That would be my guess there, but unfortunately, they're going to have to make that decision. Now, the only good thing about that is it's not horrible field position for Oxford if you don't convert, but it's still very good field position nonetheless. It's a lineup with trips to the left, and it is going to be a pooch kick. We'll go back toward the end zone, bounce right at the goal line, the touchback, and another flag on the field at the end of that fourth down play. That's going to be interesting to see what it is because it, depending on who it's on and what it is, Lakers may be you know, close enough to where they throw a Hail Mary or they kick it or you know, it spins the Oxford offense a little bit further back. Still a 7-7 ball game. The Lakers have had two touchdowns on this drive negated by penalties. A third penalty coming in on the fourth down punt. So likely some conduct on the sidelines, some continued conversations with the officiating crew. That's both Elijah Durham and Zach Hilbers, as we both noted after that third down play, wanted a flag in the end zone against Oxford for a pass interference or a defensive hold and didn't get it, but Either way, it's going to be Oxford ball with eight minutes left in the first half in this 7-7 ball game. And with the penalty, even more favorable field position. And sportsmanlike conduct will advance them to the 35-yard line as they begin their, their drive. Yeah, it looked like Hilbers and the referees were even continuing their discussion up until just a moment ago. I don't, it's horrible to call a penalty right there and just kind of give an advantage of the game like this. Right about where they would have been if that were a go on fourth down that was unsuccessful. Under center, Hendricks. Play action. We'll see him go to the air again. Got all the time in the world. Looking long. And oh, just a foot and a half outside of his wide receiver's hands. And those double coverage also. So probably a little bit of a 50-50 ball there for Jack Hendricks. But he's been able to make those work, including in the fourth quarter last week. And that game-winning touchdown against Rochester Adams. Yeah, probably got a bit lucky on that overthrow right there because, like you mentioned, a couple of Lakers right there to contest that throw. Looked like he had O'Neal on the left side completely by himself. Well, looked like Kalik Robinson and Jamal Shakespeare had the look there on the defensive side. So it'll be second and ten for Oxford. Hendricks back under center. We'll hand it off to Luke Johnson. We'll go to the right side. Advance forward to the 45. Knocks away from the tackle and up to the 49. Another big run for 42. Uh, and again, Johnson, that is something that we can expect to see all night between Johnson and Tate. Two physical runners that are going to be the driving forces of these offenses, especially, you know, we've seen Hendricks kind of struggle so far here tonight. Two of his throws off, but you know, it's how Johnson's been running the football. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Jack Hendricks is a heck of a quarterback, too. 212 yards and two touchdowns against Rochester Adams last week. He had another 134 in the perfect game, 7-for-7 seven seven against Rochester a couple weeks back. This guy can throw. It's a tough secondary to go up against on first down. Hendricks will hand it off again. Stiff arm up to the 50-yard line, likely going to be 
a face mask on the offensive side as he'll then get drawn back beyond the 45. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see who they call that face mask on. And they call it on the Lakers. Holding. But defensive holding call will advance Oxford forward instead. And again, Coach Hilbert is going to talk it over with the officiating crew. Take a lighter approach this time, then walk away to avoid any additional additional penalties. On the defense, 15-yard penalty. But just like that, Oxford going to get up inside the Laker territory. And they began at the 35-yard uh, line on their side. Now with the penalty, they're going to go up to the 35-yard line. 36-yard line is where they'll mark it. Now in Laker territory in the second period where it's still a 7-7 seven to seven ball game between the Lakers and the visiting Wildcats. Jake Champagne out wide left for Oxford. Eli Carpenter to the right. Play action. Hendricks going to skip it just forward. Check down to Luke Johnson. And he'll bash his way forward to the 31-yard line. Continues to get those yards after carries and catches by using the physicality that he's developed over the years as a uh, county champ wrestler, multi-sport athlete. And it's on the field tonight at West Bloomfield. And it looks like Hilvers is still continuing to give the officials a piece of his mind on the sideline. Looked like he was trying to get a hold or calling for a hold right there on Allos, but... You know, Hilbert's fighting for his guys out there. Gotta love to see that from your head coach. The second down at the Lakers 31-yard line. Under center, Hendricks with a man in motion, hands it off to Johnson. They'll skip and trip forward to the 25-yard line. Yeah, and I'm guessing going into the half, the Lakers' entire defensive unit will just be, you know, their entire game plan going into the second half will be stopped 42. He has just been gashing them up tonight. He's really just been the entire Oxford offense. The Lakers have got to find some way to kind of put a bottle on him. Move the chains again and advance closer to the Laker end zone. But midway through the second quarter at West Bloomfield High School with a game that's got a lot on the line, a lot of playoff points and positioning definitely on the minds of both these teams. And so is the OAA Red Division Championship. First and 10 at the Laker 26 yard line. Hendricks will hand it off to Johnson. He will get a wide open field and down to the 10 yard line before finally Jamal Shakespeare and Will Espy take him down. And this Oxford offensive line so far tonight has just been a group of dogs and just dominating in the trench so far. And this Lakers defensive front has got to find a way to, you know, kind of counter back and get some licks in themselves and stop this run game and give themselves an opportunity to rush hundreds. About 5.50 and ticking to go in the first half. It is a 7-7 ball game between the West Bloomfield Lakers and the Oxford Wildcats on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FF. Hendricks will set up under center. Two in the backfield. Andrew Barrett, the fullback, and the running back, Johnson. Johnson will get the ball again. Going to go left side. Outside the tackles and not going to get a whole lot as he'll get down to about the six. Uh, it's I'm almost starting to feel like I'm watching Miracle just start, and it's that scene where the coach just keeps on saying again, 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 because it's just that seems like that is Oxford's plan so far here tonight. Just keep on feeding Johnson the ball until the Lakers stop him. And so far, aside from that fourth or third and short and fourth and short, the Lakers haven't had an answer for Johnson. Ball is placed at the six yard line. It was Luke Johnson with the first score of the night for Oxford. The way this drive's been going, looks like they're gonna go for a second try at the end zone with 42. Hendricks under center, Barrett and Johnson in the backfield. They'll hand it off to Johnson. He'll get inside the five and a bunch of Lakers there to put up a brick wall and stop him just shortly after that. Yeah, it looked like they got some penetration right there from the inside. And I think it was Tank Pittman on that play. But that's what they've got to get from their defensive tackles, especially right here at the backed up at their own goal line. Just kind of, you know, displace some of these runs and set off some of these Johnson angles and set them outside or back inside towards the linebackers. Johnson gets one on the run and they'll set up 
in between the hashes at the five yard line in Laker territory, knocking on the door of the end zone again. Here come the Wildcats. Hendricks will roll out to his right, pass down to the four yard line, diving for the end zone. He's got it, touchdown Oxford. Andrew Barrett gets the grab and gets the score. Yeah, just really one thing that is easy to do in the goal line, or in, right at the goal line when you've been able to run the ball so, so successfully throughout the game is those quick little play action dumps and Hendricks does a tremendous job of faking the handoff and delivering a throw where he's just the receiver is able to get the ball and you know really get in the end zone in perfect stride without having to slow down. That score coming with four and a half to play in the first half. The Lakers have all three timeouts as the senior kicker Drew Cady will come out for the point after touchdown. Great snap and hold. The kick is up. And that kick is good. Just like that, it is 14 to 7 in favor of the Oxford Wildcats with four and a half left to play in the half. And the whole time we thought it was going to be 4 2 going into the end zone. Instead, it was 2 4. The three sport athlete, Andrew Barrett, who also plays baseball and wrestles at Oxford High School. But that drive was another classic Luke Johnson drive. Just put his head down, put his shoulder down, bash through all 11 defenders and get six points. Yeah, and really what we saw in that last play is exactly why Oxford wants to be able to run the football like they've been able to, because then once you get right in, inside of the 10, what do you expect more than just, you know, more physical smash mouth football? Then they just throw one play action at you like that and it leads to a touchdown. Luke Johnson last season wore the number 31. This season, a special jersey number for Oxford in the 42, worn by the late Tate Meir, who lost his life in the Oxford High School shooting in 2021. An, an ex Luke Johnson before the season in August, when he was awarded the number, said 42 may just be a number, but it symbolizes everything Tate did and stood for. I've been striving to live my life through Tate traits, and mine is being accountable in every aspect of my life. So they kick the ball back off to the Lakers and they'll get another try at trying to tie this game up. They had success for that with that on their first offensive drive and they had a lot of success on that second offensive drive. But as we've seen in games past, discipline issues, penalties, maybe a little bit of them and a little bit of just the way this officiating crew is going to call this game tonight really set the Lakers back. Yeah, and you know, Granted, they had an opportunity to take the lead and they weren't able to do it, but you know, you get the ball in the second half, coming away with some points right here, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown is huge. And just, you know, try and eat as much clock up as you can along the way, ideally. Off the touchback, Lakers will start at the 20 yard line in between the hashes on Ox on their side of the, of the field. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half, Lakers down seven to 14. Two split out to the right, including Jaden Allos for the Lakers. Low snap to Bo Jackson. Going to lose that pocket and go to the ground. A sack for Hunter Ganey sets the Lakers back. Uh, and two things. Granted, last time it was a penalty. This time it's a sack, but mistakes. These past two drives, the Lakers have set themselves behind the sticks on their first play. And that's one thing as an offense that you can't allow if you want to put up points and stay on schedule. 205 pounds versus 215 and 205 wins as the dual sport athlete, the track star as well, Hunter Ganey sets the Lakers back to their 10 yard line. Jackson out of the gun, low snap again, screen, Cam Flowers caught at the four yard line, up to the 15 yard line, up to the 16 yard line before he is finally spun around, do -si do and thrown to the ground by Luke Johnson. Yeah, Johnson with a tremendous tackle right there. Had he not made that tackle, Flowers looked like he may have been off to the races. And we saw earlier on that sc that screen got negated. But, you know, get Cam Flowers a little bit of open space and you never know what can happen. Flowers screen advances the Lakers up to the 16-yard line. It'll be twins to the left. And twins to the right for the Lakers with Josh Tate in the backfield alongside Bo Jackson, the quarterback. Out of the pocket. Jackson going to go down again, tries to toss it away, gets it to a lineman. Oh, boy. Up to the 20-yard line and forward. He fumbled it. It goes into the hands of Jeremiah Benson, and he goes up to the 25. 
And it's going to be interesting to see if that ball was tipped or not. And I, that's probably the discussion going on right now with the officials. Because if that ball wasn't tipped, the offensive lineman unfortunately cannot come away with that pass and it'll be a penalty on the Lakers. But they didn't throw the flag initially and nobody saw it. I don't know how you can throw that flag now. For all we know, that ball hit Josh Tate's hands. And it kind of seemed like Jackson was going down. Maybe that ball was ripped out as he tried to tuck it in. And that's probably what they're discussing because... It kind of looked to me like he tried to just toss that ball off to Tate, in which case it could be considered a forward pass or a penalty. And ultimately, they're going to throw a flag for a procedure, probably. Yeah, exactly. Considered a forward pass, and as Lions faithful know, you don't declare your old lineman an eligible receiver in a legal manner. You can't throw the ball to him, and they consider that a forward pass, not a fumble. You can't fumble forward. That's going to get negated by the penalty and move the Lakers back. Heard a lot of that so far tonight. The Lakers now will go back to their 12-yard line. And I think that that also kept them the down, though, so they'll have an opportunity maybe to pick up this third down. But going into the half, they're going to have to emphasize, you know, eliminating these penalties, eliminating these mistakes that have really killed the offense. Jamal Shakespeare in that quarterback. They're taking a lot of time setting this up as he'll discuss the play with Elijah Durham and Cameron Flowers. Three split out to the right. Oxford sideline still talking things over with the officiating crew, so the play clock has not started yet. They have not whistled this active. Illegal touching is a loss of down foul. It'll be fourth down. And we need 13 seconds back on the clock. That will answer your question, Matt Catoni. They don't get to keep that third down. So now, likely going to see that punt team come in for West Bloomfield, led by Jaden Allos. They are pinned back deep in their own territory off of some great defensive line work from the Wildcats, but also some big mistakes for the Lakers. Again, setting them back on the offensive side. As Allos will line up on his goal line to punt this ball away. Been pretty good so far this season on those punts, averaging about 35 yards. But he fumbles in the end zone. Got to get it out. It's still over there. It's going to land forward at the 11-yard line. The only good thing about that for the Lakers, they want it to be a penalty for running into the kicker, but a little bit late on that. It's going to be pointed toward Oxford. They're going to get... The ball inside the 15-yard line with a chance to go up two scores. Yeah, and that's a tough one because, again, you know, no replay review in football, so it's hard to tell if he made contact with them early. They can't go back to it, so they're just going to let it play as the ball lies. You know, Oxford set up with prime position to go up two scores before the half. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. It is a 14-7 ball game in favor of the Wildcats. This could put them up two scores. The Lakers would still have time and timeouts to try to answer back, and then they get the football to start half number two. But here comes Hendricks and this offense. Hands it off to Luke Johnson. Same as always, outside the tackles to the right side and down to the six. Yeah, and the, just a gashing run right there on first down, setting them up with, you know, another play that inside the 10 where you got to kind of question yourself after that last series. You know, they came out with the play action from about this distance last time. Or, you know, Johnson's been gashing you. How do they respond if they show a similar play action fake? Second down and five coming up for the Wildcats at the Lakers six yard line. The one yard line will be all they need for a first and goal as we are under two minutes with the clock rolling in the first half. Oxford up 14 to seven. Looking to make this a two score lead. Here comes the junior Hendricks and a senior running back Johnson in the backfield. With a man in motion, right up the gut. Johnson barreling forward, rolling into the end zone. Jackson's carry is good for the Oxford touchdown. They are going to give it to him. Touchdown for Oxford. It will put them up 20 to 7. And so far, just a very physical performance from this Oxford front on both sides of the ball. Going into the half, you know, the Lakers are able to come away with points right here before the half and be down one score. They're going to have to look at themselves on both sides of the ball and just come out in the second half and not just play more detailed, 
play more physical because that's really the difference. For third time tonight, Drew Cady will come out for the PAT as holder Jonathan Corcoran. It goes up and it splits the uprights just like that. It's a two score lead for the Oxford Wildcats up 21 to seven late in the first half at West Bloomfield High School. Yeah, and just these mistakes once again in these games are just crucial for the Lakers. They have those penalties that back them up inside of their 10. And it culminates with a, a botch snap on the punt and that gives Oxford prime field position to take a two score lead. Now the Lakers got to get it together. Short term memory. Look, these last two offensive drives have really not gone their way. And they've done a lot of hurting themselves, some self inflicted wounds with penalties. Cost them a touchdown two drives ago and set them way back. And then another unfortunate situation as the punt was bobbled in the end zone and Alos just had to get it out of there anywhere away from that end zone. And Oxford had a very quick drive to put them up two scores. So the Lakers got to erase that from their memory and just play their game, run their sets, and try to get this game a little bit more even as we approach the half. They will get the football to start the final 24 minutes of this game. It is a 21-7 game in favor of Oxford with two minutes to play. Long kickoff lands in the end zone far to the south of the stadium, and there'll be another touchback to start the Lakers at the 20 yard line for the second consecutive drive. Yeah, and really right here for the offensive line, it comes down to them. They can't keep on getting these holding calls or these blocking penalties that keep on setting them back behind the sticks or wiping out these huge plays, especially when they're going to need points this drive. Look to see, perhaps Josh Tate get more involved, a lot of passing these last couple of drives last time really because the field position after those penalties set the Lakers back they'll begin with two split out to the left side of the quarterback now they're going to put quads out to the left empty backfield for the quarterback Shakespeare they'll send Allos back off the field make it trips to the left get the right personnel with a man in motion Quarterback Shakespeare going to take it himself. Draw play for the quarterback to the 25. Runs into his tackler. He gets up to the 31-yard line to move the chains. And, and again, they do a good job of displacing the defense right there with that motion. And Shakespeare, tremendous runner once again on that play. Picks up the first down and moves the stick and picks up a very much-needed first down for the offense that have been struggling. They don't have to rush this drive either. All three timeouts still there for the Lakers. First and 10 at their 31 yard line, trips to the left again and two out to the right. Shakespeare takes the snap out of the shotgun, rolls up in the pocket, gonna take it himself on the ground again, up toward the line to gain and out of bounds, just a yard shy. Another great play on the ground on the quarterback draw. Yeah, and just a tremendous job of moving behind the line of scrimmage for Shakespeare and being able to pick up the yardage that the Lakers have desperately needed these past few drives. Two straight runs for first downs will give him a friendly position as he reached toward the sideline and move forward. 50 on the clock, one, five, zero. Did you hear the officiating crew will adjust the clock to 150. I'm sorry, 148. There you go, another adjustment. Got to get it right, and that's what they're doing, taking their time to make the right time as the Lakers on a critical offensive drive. I'm sorry. As the officiating crew and the booth crew here at West Bloomfield High School get the clock adjusted. We'll remind you, you can join us over the weekend at fire station number one, just a little to the north of the end zone. The Lakers are trying to get into Sunday noon to three for their fire department open house, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. As Shakespeare takes the shotgun snap, throws long, and overhead of Cam Flowers, incomplete, about three yards ahead of him, and off his left shoulder, incomplete. Yeah, it looked like if he had been able to deliver, strike a little bit more towards the inside, Flowers had a step on him towards the post. But, you know, not unable to come away with that pass right there. And now the Lakers set up with a second and long right here after moving the ball very well in those past two plays. Is a 21-7 ball game. The Lakers 
Got around the minute left to play in this half. We'll get the football to start half number two. Shakespeare with two runners in the backfield and two split out to his left side. The second down snap rolls outside the pocket to his left. Looking toward the sideline, low pass to Allos, and it hits the turf just before it gets in his hands. The sideline can't believe it, but I saw that hit the dirt. I, I don't think that they're arguing in the right favor, but they got to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's always going to, the bias is always going to come out when you think it's your, or a catch for your side. Unfortunately, he just underthrew that pass right there. Ellis was wide open, just unable to get the ball to him. Now third and long right here for the Lakers as they need these points before the half, honestly. Thank you for tuning in to live coverage of West Bloomfield Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD, Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, your home for Laker sports. So here it is, the third and 10 for the Lakers at their 30, at their 39 yard line. Jackson looking long toward the sideline. Durham tiptoes inbounds. Will they give it to him? It appears not as Zach Hilbers walks out to the officiating crew and the side judge. He can't believe an incomplete pass. Fourth down coming up again for the Lakers. Again, and one of those bang bang plays where in the NFL we'd be seeing them go to the replay booth right now. It's tough to say whether or not he got his feet in, but I don't think he was able to come away with that catch. And now after you know, moving the ball very well, running it, Lakers throw the ball three straight times and are set up with the fourth and long here. Yeah, it looked like that left foot was out of bounds, but maybe could have slid that right foot in. It was really close. Tough to see that in full game action as the Lakers will talk it over on the sidelines here. As we approach halftime at West Bloomfield High School to bring the punt team out again. After a couple of really nice plays by Jamal Shakespeare to start this drive on the ground, a couple of first downs, and then three straight don't go the Lakers' way. Now they're going to have to give the ball up to Oxford once again. They still got a couple of timeouts on their side. Allos punt the ball off. It's high and hanging. Going to go down, land at the 25. Bounce toward the 30-yard line and up to the 32. Finally chased down and terminated by Obi Duru. Yeah, a very friendly bounce for Oxford right here. And, you know, even if they were planning on just running the clock out, who knows what can happen the way that Johnson has been running the ball here tonight. And it's going to be huge for the Lakers to keep Oxford out of the end zone on this drive. 21 to 7 is the score at West Bloomfield High School. Two touchdowns in the second quarter for the Oxford Wildcats, a reception by Barrett, and then a and then another rushing touchdown, the second of the evening for Luke Johnson, just a few minutes ago, gives them the lead late in the second period, and they'll begin this drive at their 32. Shotgun snap, handoff. Johnson gonna go left toward the tackles, get up to the 35, up to the 36 with a push. And they will mark it at the 37-yard line with one minute and ticking to go in the half. And one thing that's really standing out to me so far this game in the run game is the fact that these Oxford offensive linemen are three to four yards downfield almost every single time on these runs. They're just moving this Lakers defensive front at will at this point. Approaching 30 seconds left in the first half is a 21-7 ball game in favor of the four and two Oxford Wildcats. Snap to Hendricks, gonna throw outside to his right, caught at about the 44 yard line and then knocked out of bounds. I mean, a phenomenal hit right there to knock him out of bounds by Espy and right at the sticks too. It looks like they're gonna give him it, but just a phenomenal job flying to the football and making sure that play did not go any further. Off the reception by Owen Pavlock that advances Oxford to the 43 yard line. They will call a timeout. Second timeout of the half. And that's their second of three. They got one more left to go as they approach midfield. We'll probably take a couple of tries down the field to just run this thing out if they're not able to get out of bounds. But so far, it has been all Oxford at West Bloomfield High School. And other than that, a lot of Laker penalties have shut down opportunities a little bit is just the way the game's going to be officiated. It's part of how you got to play in the OAA and the MHSA and any level of football, but also some self-inflicted wounds so far. A lot to clean up, and the Lakers 
probably would be, would be content to come out of this half down just two scores at 21 to seven. That's what they're preventing. Any additional points from going on the board before they head into the locker room on senior night, make an adjustment and try to once again at their home stadium, come back from down two scores and try to win this ball game in the OAA red. Off the timeout. Snap to Hendricks from under center, taking his time in the pocket. Throw out into the boundary to Johnson, and he'll skip out of bounds just past the 45-yard line to stop the clock. And again, just a testament once again to this Oxford offensive line. Hendricks having about 20 minutes to throw on that play. And this offensive line has just been one of the more dominant offensive lines we've been able to see all year. And they're so far tonight have done a good job of protecting Ward and getting to the next level to help some of these runs for Johnson. 16 seconds left to play in the half at the Oxford 45. On second down, Hendricks shotgun snap, looking toward the sideline. It is caught and up to the 50 yard line, up to the 44 yard line. It'll hit the ground. Oxford still got that one timeout left as Owen Pavlock advances into plus territory. Nine seconds left. And a flag on the field now after the play, landing inside the 50. It's going to be on Oxford and set them back. With under 10 seconds to play in this half, they'll get one more try at it. At, look, after that penalty, maybe perhaps they just clock this ball and call it a half. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if they want to just be overly aggressive since they're at midfield, or if they're just going to be content handing the ball off once, and if it doesn't go too far upfield, taking it to the half. Hendricks under center, hands it off to Luke Johnson. Left side uh, along the tackles up to the 44 yard line. That'll be it for this first half as the clock will strike zero. Halftime at West Bloomfield High School. It is 21 to seven. In favor of the Oxford Wildcats, you're listening and watching live coverage of West Bloomfield Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We also thank you for joining us on our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15 and on the Facebook page of the West Bloomfield School District, as well as on our YouTube page at Civic Center TV. Feel free to subscribe, hit that bell icon where you'll see Laker football coverage all season long and you can look back on our Laker football coverage at the end of the season as well as Lakers looking to make one final drive into this OAA Red Division and put themselves in position for at least a share of the title. They're going to have a lot to come back from in the second half, down two scores, but they will get the football after a little bit of a break, and a little bit of re-strategizing after 24 minutes. Yeah, I don't necessarily know if there's too many or too much re-strategizing to do on the offensive side of the ball, rather just cleaning up some mistakes. Because especially on that one drive, they really took points off of the board for themselves. And if they're able to clean up some of the mistakes that they made penalty-wise, I see the offense operating much better going forward. Defensively, though, they have to just, you know, somehow find a way to get better in the trenches in the second half because that's where they have struggled the most both in the pass game and the run game, not really offering much fight in either, and giving Hendricks all day to pass when they've seldomly passed, but more so just allowing themselves to be pushed back three or four yards in the run game. It is also senior night here at West Bloomfield High School. As we recognize the football players before the game, we'll recognize many on the cheer team as well as we're at halftime at West Bloomfield High School. You'll see that. A beautiful night to honor our seniors who have put four years of effort into their respective sports and entertaining us at the Swamp. The class of 2025, well represented at Lakers Stadium tonight as we are at the half at West Bloomfield High School. The Lakers trailing the Oxford Wildcats 21 to 7. And Matt, look, sports season here at West Bloomfield and in many communities in Michigan and other football loving states across this great nation. They tend to focus on football, but we have a unique opportunity every game, especially with our TV broadcasts across the season for these home games. To be able to see additional excellent athletes 
and musicians and others performing and showing off their massive talent at West Bloomfield High School. Yeah, it's not just the football program, obviously, that has a ton of talent emanating from it, but, you know, the cheer team, the dance team, color guard even, but the band especially has a lot of talent. And, you know, it's awesome to see all of them get their deserved recognition, not just, you know, on homecoming or family fun night, but tonight as well for the seniors. Jasmine Shropshire. As we listen in to some of these seniors from the cheer and the palms teams getting their due recognition at West Bloomfield High School on senior night, alongside their families as well. This is a really big time of the year for them as it's their best opportunity to get some, for them, in-game action where they can get recruiting videos done and send video to coaches and potentially be able to cheer and participate in the marching band at the next level. It's just a cheer in the Palms team, but our musicians as well that would normally at this time be performing on the field tonight. All the, all the kudos, the entertainment, the smiles, the laughs, the appreciation, the round of applause, especially to them and their families. Yeah, and it's just, you know, again, like we've mentioned earlier in the broadcast, a surreal moment to be able to have this moment on the field, you know, your last home game as it is, but to be able to have that moment with your family just makes it mean all that much. Accompanied by her father, Sankar. So she think it's recognized. She's also the student liaison for the West Bloomfield School District Board of Education. You'll see her quite often, each and every month on WBTV, talking about the latest things that are happening at West Bloomfield High School in particular. And you'll hear a lot about those things happening at West Bloomfield High School with us as well on the Splash Live, your daily TV show all about your community here in the greater West Bloomfield area. Myself, Kevin McIntosh, Jake Schaff, and the entire team bringing you the latest from Orchard Lake, Eagle Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and of course, West Bloomfield had a great opportunity today to hear from another exceptional student at West Bloomfield High School, who's perhaps gonna be impacting your trip to the polls for the election as Michelle Lickman came on the show today, one of the winners of the state's I Voted sticker contest. Had a chance to talk to Kevin McIntosh on the program this morning. Really great conversation with her. She talked about her design, her inspiration, and how proud she is to be one of just a handful of students across the state who had their designs ultimately be the ones that are going to be going to polling locations across the great state of Michigan and be that symbol that people love to pick up during the election season. Again, Matt, multi-talented students with a lot to offer at West Bloomfield High School, taking advantage of the programs that are there and being able to show off their talents on a widespread level way beyond the doors of West Bloomfield High School. Yeah, and again, we've said it throughout the season, just a lot of talent from this West Bloomfield program outside of football. And it's nice to see everyone get their share of recognition throughout the community. We'll give the due recognition to these Oxford Wildcats up 21 to seven as we were at halftime at West Bloomfield High School, recognizing the seniors from the marching band and the cheer team as the marching band will get ready for their weekly performance, their final one for this senior class during the regular season at West Bloomfield High School tonight. And Oxford been fantastic offensively in the first half. You think about it, it's all been Luke Johnson. Yeah, Luke Johnson so far tonight has just been driving force of this offense. And he's really been how they've opened up things in the passing game as well. You've seen them, you know, use play action to create that one touchdown, but also the pockets that it's helped create off of that play action and helped give Hendricks some time to throw. So far tonight, Johnson has just been phenomenal, and that's got to be the biggest key for the Lakers going into half two of stopping him. Yeah, we haven't really been able to see a lot of Jack Hendricks in the air because that running game has been so effective for the Lakers, for the uh, Wildcats. So far in the first half. Luke Johnson been down there and Jack Hendricks been able to make a couple of connections with Owen Pavlock and Jake Champagne so far as well, getting the football in the first half against these Lakers, but it's really been all about that rushing game and it, it, it proves that Luke Johnson, the, among the toughest running backs to stop in the entire state of Michigan, we got a few of them right here in the OAA Red Division alongside Josh Tate as well with West Bloomfield. That's really going to be their key 
target in the second half of this front seven. If you can shut down Luke Johnson, you give your offense a great chance to come back into this game and put some points on the board. Yeah, when we played Clarkston, we saw the Bowman brothers offer, you know, different aspects as runners. Johnson here tonight is kind of, you know, a blend of both of them, and he's gashing them just like they did. And it's going to be huge for the Lakers to see if they can finally find a way to stop some of these elite running backs. 21 to 7 is the score at West Bloomfield High School as we are at the half between the Lakers and the Oxford Wildcats in this final OAA Red Division matchup for both of these teams in the 2024 season. And it has massive implications in the Red Division. Look, all these teams, they have a bunch of different check marks they're trying to get off the list every single year. Those goals, of course, paramount amongst those goals is winning a state championship. But before you, you get there, you got to get into the playoffs. What helps you get into the playoffs? Winning your division, especially when you're in one of the toughest divisions, if not the toughest division in the entire state of Michigan. And that is the OAA Red. I talked about on this week in Laker football earlier on this week with Coach Hilbers. The parity on display is we have a possibility of every single team in this league ending their season with a 2-2 two and two record against their four opponents in the OAA Red and possibly a five-way tie for the, for the divisional title. That means all these teams are going to be in the playoffs. They've all gone up against tough competition, played a lot of close games with Oxford losing to Clarkston 15-23 to and losing to Utica Eisenhower, another really good team in week one, 16-33, to keeping it close enough to pick up some playoff points with those quality losses. And then picking up quality wins, Lake Orion, a three-point win for the Wildcats. Rochester, an 18-point win. And then last week, of course, Rochester Adams, an 18-17 victory for the Wildcats. West Bloomfield on the other side, very similarly. 15-point loss to Groves, 7-point loss to Rochester Adams, 15-point loss to Clarkston. But their wins have been really impressive, too. 42 points on Chippewa Valley, 44 points on Southfield a and And, of course, last week, the biggest and arguably most important of all of them thus far, Lake Orion, 49 to 41. All the more reason it makes this game that much more important for the Lakers. And they have some very tough conversations to have at halftime as they try to come back out here. But they can also learn a lot from last week. Coach Helbers talked to me about this also on this week in Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM to be able to come back from down 14 points last week. Yes, with a little bit of luck on their side, but a lot of execution being the big factor in this. They came back from down 28 to 14, ended up taking the lead 35 to 28 and eventually winning the game 49 to 41, despite some late game heroics from Lake Orion, inching them closer to being within one score of tying that ball game back up doesn't matter. They finished the job. They did what they had to do. They made the correct adjustments. They stayed confident, but also stayed vigilant to be smart and play disciplined football. That's what you're looking for from the L boys in half number two, down 14 points, and they will get the football to start half number two on senior night as we again take a look at the West Bloomfield High School marching band celebrating their seniors as well as, as they have their halftime performance. We celebrated the Laker football players and their families of their seniors before the football game this evening as it is the final home game of the regular season for the Lakers and depending on how tonight's game these next few weeks pan out it could be the final home game of 2024 for West Bloomfield altogether. Tyler Keith alongside Matt Catoni on your call tonight on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM your home for Laker football. Now Matt we, we talked about the benefits that have been in place for Oxford in the first half uh, offensively, but they've also made big plays defensively. If you're looking at the Lakers offense, a team that was able to put up a ton of yards last week against Lake Orion in the air, 121 yards passing against a team like Groves, and then they come back weeks later and have 202 yards, double that against Lake Orion, and then rushed for 300 yards last week as well. What are you looking for the Lakers in half number two to try to get out against what's been a very stingy Wildcats defense so far tonight? Yeah, we've kind of seen the Lakers struggle when they've passed on early downs and set themselves you know, off schedule a little bit. Second and long turns into third and long. 
And this passing offense has really struggled at its most when teams know that they're passing. So it's going to be up to the Lakers, I really think, on this first drive to allow that run game to really be the driving force of the offense and not feel too panicked, even though they're down two scores, to abandon the run. Again, it is 21 to 7 in favor of the Oxford Wildcats. The OAA Red Division finale tonight for both of these teams on a Thursday in West Bloomfield. The rest of the league will be playing on Friday night. The matchup that both these teams will be looking at, especially if they come out with one in the win column tonight, will be that Lake Orion and Clarkston matchup. Lake Orion coming in to tomorrow night's matchup, four and two overall and one and two in the OAA red. Clarkston, four and two overall, but two and one in the red. If West Bloomfield wins tonight and Lake Orion wins tomorrow, five-way tie for the OAA red championship. If either Lake Orient, if either Clarkston or Oxford win, they will at least have a two-way share of the title. And if things go one way or the other for either of those teams, they could be the sole champions of the OAA Red Division come the end of tomorrow night. But that is tomorrow night. Tonight we got the Lakers and the Oxford Wildcats with a big chance for the Lakers to come out punching in the second half as they will get the football to start half number two against Oxford. And there's plenty more going on across the community. We will have live coverage for you this weekend of the West Bloomfield Fire Department Open House. That is happening right up the street from West Bloomfield High School, just north of the high school at Fire Station Number 1, Sunday, October 13th, from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Plenty of demonstrations, and we'll be able to get some advice from the West Bloomfield Fire Department, some fire safety tips that you can employ in your home right now to keep you safe as we've really change seasons from summer into fall on a beautiful night in greater west bloomfield what's been a beautiful fall week in greater west bloomfield plus plenty more to talk to from across the community some vendors like our local hospital systems uh, other home safety and inspection companies will be there alana's foundation who was out at the west bloomfield township clerk's office today with their flu shot clinic at town hall that they do every single year for their seventh annual today they'll be out at the fire department open house also providing flu shots for this season as well sunday noon to 3 p.m come on out to fire station number one join us out there or if you can't you can tune in on our broadcast on civic center tv and 89.3 lakes fm your home for lakers sports matt this game big for both of these teams, for the Lakers and the Wildcats. Yes, they're both looking at the OAA Red Division title, but for the Lakers, you don't just want to get into the playoffs. You want a chance to come back here and give your seniors and give these Laker fans another chance to have some off some postseason football at the Swamp. Yeah, and aside from potentially hosting a playoff game as well, you want to give yourself a more favorable matchup. And, you know, right now the Lakers are probably looking at getting in the playoffs one way or another at this point, but it's better to rattle off a few wins and play a lesser opponent as to, opposed to, you know, having to play one of the top teams in the state in the opening round and, you know, having a lesser chance. Yeah, going on the road, but Zach Helbers has talked to me about it. We've talked about it. It's not necessarily the same sort of advantage for home teams in high school football as it is at the college level or at the professional level but there is some difference in there and, and you have experience in this from playing football at the high school level it's a different routine and that can kind of take you through some different pitfalls as you go later on into the season especially in the playoffs if you're traveling more and especially if you got some pressure on the way as well yeah it's really all about comfortability and if you have to go on the road unfamiliar environment especially come playoff time you may have to play someone that you're not used to playing and, and travel somewhere that you're not used to going on the road and that just factors into it and you have to get used to where you're or where you're at your surroundings who you're playing whereas if you're at home they have to adjust to the environment they have to adjust to how you want to play and right now it's huge for the lakers to try and rattle off at least two more wins before the season's end to try and get a home playoff game in the next few minutes we'll see the oxford wildcats and the west bloomfield lakers retake this field both coming off of really big games a week ago it was the Incredible performance for the Lakers on this very field six days ago to, uh, against the Lake Orion Dragons in that 49 to 41 victory. And in, in this case, uh, eight days ago, my apologies, it was last week Friday, not last week Wednesday. And 
Uh, and for Oxford last week Friday at home against Rochester Adams, yes, they were down Rhino Waters, but that's the same Adams team that you saw all throughout the season who have played with an injured quarterback before, have plenty of experience. That's really what the OAA Red is really coming down to, it seems. The teams with a lot of experience are playing very consistently. The younger teams are coming up, and there's no better evidence of that in the OAA Red, in my opinion, than the Oxford Wildcats, which for years have been kind of overlooked as a team since the switchover as Zach Line took over from for Bud Rowley after his legendary run for, for Big Blue. And now they're back. They've, they've been able to develop this program, bring in upperclassmen this season who have mostly, most of them been on the varsity squad in the past on the offensive side. They are returning 11 starters on a defensive side, returning 10. Experience really shows in how they're playing on the field, and they're playing with that determination too because for the first time in a while, these Wildcats have been in the driver's seat of the Red in 2024. Yeah, last year at Media Day, we heard uh, Line talk about how he wanted to you know, really build the program back up to where it was and how that was going to take time. And that was before last season where we saw them struggle a bit at times. And now this year, you know, now that they've got some more seniors that they're a more experienced team, you're starting to see, you know, the fruits of their labor and how that program is starting to, you know, build some momentum and how, you know, interesting it may be going forward, especially considering they have another year with Hendricks at the helm. As the Lakers retake the field just minutes away from the second period, the second half, they're down 21-7 to on senior night at West Bloomfield High School. Bo Jackson on your screen at the 50-yard line alongside a couple of receivers, including Devin James and Josh Hunter as they get ready for half number two. And this receiving core is going to be huge for them because Oxford's been able to really get into the backfield and shut down the Josh Tate-led running game for the Lakers. Some impressive runs throughout that first half as you see Oxford on the far side of the field come back out. But by and large, they've been able to put a lot of pressure on the run game. But the Lakers have had a lot of opportunities in the air. Most of those that have not gone their way been drawn back by penalties. Yeah, and really that's got to be the biggest thing for this offensive line. They, Yeah, occasionally you may give up sacks, but the one thing that you absolutely cannot have, especially consistently as an offensive line unit, is penalties. And they've had a series of penalties here tonight that have brought back touchdowns, first downs, a whole bunch of plays, and that's one thing that you cannot have from your offensive line. Benefit for the Lakers, a little bit of an extended halftime today because of senior night, a little bit more time to go through those first 24 minutes in this 21-7 matchup in favor of the Wildcats at halftime and determine, hey, what did we do wrong? Where did things start to untangle for us in the, in the first half, or how do we untangle from how things got tangled up in half number one, come back out in half number two, forget about those first 24 minutes and make the last 24 minutes what ultimately counts at the end of this ball game. That's got to be on the minds of the Lakers. And for these seniors, look, they're going up against 21 returning st seniors for the Wildcats on offense and defense. The Lakers seniors on senior night, what no better time for them to show up in half number two, take control, take this game back, and show these young Lakers how to win ball games late in the regular season. Yeah, and really, it is going to be huge for this offense to come out. And like you said, show these young Lakers how it's done. Josh Tate and Elijah Durham are going to have to take charge. Cam Flowers, too. Those older, more experienced offensive guys are going to have to take charge and really find a way to find the end zone this drive and get it back to a one-score game. 21 to 7 as the Lakers will get the ball to start the second half. And that might be the best thing for them is having a chance to come back out and make an immediate run at the end zone to start the final 24 minutes of this. We knew that that was something that really gave them a spark last week against Lake Orion. Yes, it was just a seven point game at the half, but they made a huge mistake right before the half. Probably were a little bit down on themselves after that going into the half as they had a tie ball game. Then Lake Orion comes out. They get up 28 to 14, and that's where the Lakers started to get their second win and fight on back. This first drive is going to tell us a lot about what this Lakers reaction is going to be to Oxford and if they're going to be able to have a chance to come back in this game and still fight for that at least share of the OAA Red title. 
Yeah, and really the biggest thing that they can fall back on from that first half, a lot of the reason why they are down 21-7 to is their own mistakes. If not for a series of penalties, they very well would have been up 14-7. to And if not for a botch snap on a punt, they're not down 21-7 to right now, arguably. The penalties played a major factor for the Lakers in the first half, negated two tries at the end zone that were successful in the red zone. Early on in the second period, a really impressive grab by Jaden Allos. That got negated by a penalty. Another another great throw by Bo Jackson, kind of just getting into that perfect pocket for Elijah Durham in the end zone that would have tied that game up at 14 and made this a 21 to 14 game perhaps with some momentum, also maybe aiding that Lakers defense. They got to put that all in the rear view mirror and come back out in this second half, not get this discouraged and not continue to make those penalties and those mistakes in discipline in the second half. If they can do that, they'll have a fighting chance against Oxford. And what's even more interesting, Matt, we talked about home field advantage and how it's maybe not as much of an actual live advantage in high school football at this level. But we've seen the OAA Red, it has been the difference maker in 2024 as the home team has won every one of these in-division matchups so far across all five of the teams in the red. Yeah, and really it goes back to what we were saying, that comfortability and that, you know, that game day routine. And it's going to be huge for the Lakers now, you know, rely and fall back on that home crowd and, you know, that home field advantage in the second half. It's a 21 to seven ball game in favor of the Oxford Wildcats as both teams get their 11 players back out on the field and get ready to put 12 minutes on that clock to start the third. The Lakers will receive the kick to start half number two. Drew Cady will kick it off from the Oxford 40-yard line from the middle of the field. Back for the Lakers, as always, Jaden Allos, Elijah Durham, and Cameron Flowers, the kick returners in 2024. Here we go. 24 minutes left. We're off to the races in half number two. Caught by Cam Flowers in the end zone for a touchback. And once again, here come the Lakers at their 20-yard line. And I'm really looking for the Lakers to get Josh Tate the ball right here on this first play. Maybe something a little bit to break him out towards the outside and you know maybe get a quick first play to him. But they got to get him more involved if they're going to want to win this game. Easier said than done on this ground game for the Lakers tonight against a really tough senior-led defensive front for the Oxford Wildcats, their starting lineman, Hunter Ganey, a senior, Brendan Cass, a senior, Carter Unruh, a junior, and Jonathan Corcoran, a senior on that defensive line. Their linebackers, Andrew Barrett, Luke Johnson, Dean Rice, all seniors. We see A.J. Krupa, a junior, out there a lot also in the linebacking core. Tough to run against that as the Lakers perhaps will try to do that to start half number two. Jackson out of the shotgun, hands it off to Tate, goes to his right side outside the tackles, Gets one, maybe two, and advances forward past the 20. Yeah, unable to really get anything going there. And just once again, this defensive front for Oxford so far tonight, not offering much in the run game and getting pressure on the quarterbacks in the passing game, especially. For second down, Obi Duru will check out of the ball game. Will Thomas will come in for the Lakers and will make another substitution, bring Duru back out as Nate Herbert goes off the field, two in the backfield alongside Jackson, or Josh Tate, and Nate Herbert. Two split out wide to the left for the Lakers. Jackson looking to his left up the field to Durham, caught at the 32. He's gonna scoot inside and pass the 35 up to the 37. It looked like he had Switzkowski bearing down on him, about to deliver a hit, but Bo Jackson delivers a strike right there to Durham to pick up the first down and Really a much needed moving of the sticks for the passing game. That has been the connection in 2024, especially in these last three weeks for the Lakers. Last week against Lake Orion, Elijah Durham with 121 yards and two touchdowns in the air. First down handoff, Tate gonna go inside left up to the 40 yard line before he stops by a trio of Wildcats. Yeah, only a couple of yards available right there for Tate. And that's another reason why they got to get the passing game going. So that way, you know, maybe they can open up some lanes for Tate in the running game. 21 to seven in favor of the Oxford Wildcats early in the second half. And a second down and eight coming up for West Bloomfield at their 40 yard line. 
Jackson will remain in as the quarterback. The single running back is Josh Tate. With three split out to the right, including Thomas in the slot. Devin Thomas will move in motion, left and back to right. Jackson steps up in the pocket. Flag is down, and he's going to go down also. Thrown to the ground. Another sack. And this time it's Jacob Childress. And my guess is based on the spot of the flag, it'll be another hold. But the sack, I'd assume Oxford's going to decline the penalty and keep it going. They're going to pick up the flag instead. So benefit for the Lakers there. They don't get the penalty on top of the sack, and the sack limits the lost yardage on second down. So they'll set up a third and long for West Bloomfield. Ball's at the 36-yard line of the Lakers with Jackson in at quarterback. They will sub out Jackson Carver. Duru also in the backfield alongside Josh Tate moves to the right side, just inside the left tackle. Snap to Jackson. Now he's got a pocket, but now it collapses. He's getting chased. Goes up the field and slammed at the 49-yard line. A ton of traffic for Cameron Flowers, and he is leveled. Yeah, a solid throw to hit him, but just not necessarily doing Cam Flowers any favors throwing that ball to him right there. It looked like there's a trio of defenders around there waiting for him and just set him up for a nice hit right there. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty for the previous spot. Insult to injury after the incomplete. The Lakers will move backwards. And again, penalties, which were a huge problem for West Bloomfield in half number one, dripping their ugly head back in. <laughs> that Oxford will take the loss of downs and try to get the football back as Jaden Allos comes out on the field to once again punt the ball off as the Lakers continue to be in a drought have not gotten into the end zone since their first drive of the game. Technically not since their second drive of the game with those two that were negated by penalties, but it only matters what's on the scoreboard. Ball's placed at the 36. Allos gets the low snap and, and punts this ball off. Going to get hang time, but land around the 40-yard line. Bounces, and it's returned at the 38, up to the 39 by Owen Pavlock. And that is where Oxford will get their first drive of the second half with incredible field position. Yeah, and like you mentioned, the Lakers unable to find the end zone since their first drive. And that's what we said after each team's first drives that, you know, it's going to be a bit of a back and forth potentially. And you got to figure out how to counter what your opponent's attacking you with. So far, Lakers haven't been able to find a counter. Oxford has. That attack has been all 4-2. Luke Johnson, the senior running back for Oxford. Lead scorer and lead rusher tonight. He'll get the football on first down. Left side up the A gap to the 50 yard line. Runs into the referee. Escapes to the 45. Still going to win a sideline at the 40. On his feet, 35, 30. And finally has to go out of bounds at the 28 yard line. A huge run for Luke Johnson. Yeah, that run was going for a lot of yardage either way. But the referee potentially serving as a blocker that play and springing them loose. But Johnson so far tonight just gashing the Lakers. And they don't have anything close to an answer for him. Another career game for Luke Johnson, who has been so critical to this offense all season long. And it's a multi-dynamic offense. They can run the ball, they can pass the ball, they can bring in a little bit of trickery, and they do a lot of that against some really tough competition, some stout defenses in the red and across the state. Bunch formation on the right side. They hand it off to Luke Johnson again. He'll get past the 25, land at the 24, and some frustration at the end of the play. A little bit of emotion coming in as they make a big tackle to the Lakers. Yeah, and that's really been a small gain for Johnson here tonight, and he picks up about six, seven yards on that carry. And so far, just a dominant performance from this offensive front of Johnson. Brody Pecor on the tackle as Oxford advances to the 28-yard line. They're in Laker territory, marching toward the red zone, up 21-7, early on in the third period at West Bloomfield High School on senior night. 
Under center, Jack Hendricks with two in the backfield, Barrett and, and Johnson. Johnson gets it, runs into the tacklers, moves inside, gets a break, inside the 15, inside the 10, and inside the end zone. The third touchdown of the night for Luke Johnson, and a massive lead. Now the case for the Oxford Wildcats. Yeah, going full beast mode on that run right there and just bounces off of one tackle after another and then has a stiff arm to spring himself into the end zone. And Johnson just putting a stamp on this game and just dominating here tonight. That makes it 27 to seven in favor of the Oxford Wildcats. Drew Cady coming out for the PAT would make it a three touchdown lead for Oxford. Just minutes in to half number two. That is exactly what happens as it splits the uprights. 28 for the Oxford Wildcats and seven for the West Bloomfield Lakers. They have yet to score since they tied this game up at seven, about nine minutes left in the third period. Yeah, and again, that is absolutely the last thing that the Lakers needed and wanted to see coming out of the half. And they don't get anything going on offense and then more of the same from Oxford on offense. And at this point, it's gut check time. They have to, on this drive and going forward, have to change what's been happening and find a way to get some points. Lakers, Lakers will get their second offensive drive of the half. The first one ended with penalties drawing them back. Little bit of promise in the air between Bo Jackson and Elijah Durham was short lived. And they quickly had to give that ball up to Oxford, who made really quick work going from just inside the four, their 40 yard line all the way past the goal line again, north to south at West Bloomfield High School to make it a three score game. Now Drew Cady will kick the ball off from the 40 yard line toward Flowers, Durham, and company. For the Lakers in their green and white jerseys, their white pants on senior night at West Bloomfield High School. Kick bounces over the head of Flowers, will recover it. He's going to return it. He's at his 15-yard line, still somehow on his feet, and gets just shy of the 20. He had the return that he left in the end zone, maybe a foot or two in. Caught the football, landed right on the goal line with the front half of his foot in the field of play. So that wasn't a decision of, hey, I'm just going to run this ball and see what happens, try to be a playmaker and make a play. He had to take that football, gets up to the 19. And again, another, it was a good return and just maybe one or two more blocks picked up and he might be gone. But especially the way this game's been going, right now would just the ultimate time to get Cam Flowers the ball and try and see if you can make one guy miss and get in the end zone. Here come the Lakers once again with Jackson at the quarterback. Trips in a bunch to the right. Screen pass to his right side. Going to be caught by Durham. He's in traffic, going backwards and down at the 15-yard line. Oxford locks him in, and Dean Rice shuts it down, a loss of five. Yeah, and right there, Durham unable to get anything going after the catch. And this Oxford defense right now is not giving up anything. And the Lakers offense just doesn't have an answer for anything they're throwing at them. Second and 15 coming up for the Lakers. Friendly spot will put them instead at their 16-yard line. So second and 14 instead. As Jackson will remain at the quarterback in this two-quarterback system for the Lakers. A few snaps at the QB for Jamal Shakespeare so far. Jackson will roll left outside the pocket, looking toward the sideline to Allos, caught at the 26 yard line and out of bounds. Yeah, a nice throw right there to set this up as a third and short, or as a second and short, yeah. And it's gonna be huge for the Lakers to convert this right here as they have not really been able to convert first down since that second drive. It's going to be third and short with Oxford up 28 to 7. You want to talk about a key play? This is it. Oxford been able to make quick work of the Lakers early in the second half. They've been able to be successful with the football offensively. Here comes Jamal Shakespeare. He's been all on the ground. He rolls outside, looking in the air this time to Allos. Caught and up to the 35. A first down, but again, a flag on the field near where the ball was caught. Yeah, and. 
saw the head tap right there from the official. Looks like an eligible man downfield. Looked like a bit of a delayed screen right there to Alos. Just a bit of a delayed play to Alos. And unfortunately, the offensive lineman got a bit too far upfield. Once again, a play that was at critical mass for the Lakers that was executed really well. Made a big play for them, but those penalties set them back. And it will be third down for West Bloomfield at their 21-yard line. And again, those critical penalties right there. Get a few yards too far upfield, and it negates the first down. Oxford 28, West Bloomfield 7. Here comes third and long for Bo Jackson. Two split out to the right. In the pocket, looks to his right, up the field, and just outside of the reach of Brendan Jones, incomplete. Yeah, it looked like a nice throw right there from Jackson just unfortunately unable to get his head around and his hands up to get a hand on that ball. And now the Lakers are punting once again. Yeah, Alos will come out for the second time this half. Had a low snap the first time around and a relatively short punt as Oxford leapt in the air, recovered it off of a friendly bounce for West Bloomfield that became a friendly bounce for the Wildcats to set up their first scoring drive just a few minutes ago. Alos punts it again around the 50-yard line, recovered at the 49, up past the 40-yard line. Pavlock up to the 40, 35, down toward the 30-yard line and stopped at the 32. A really nice return once again for Owen Pavlock, the senior. Yeah, and so far today, all three units for Oxford, offense, defense, and special teams are firing on all cylinders. And a phenomenal return right there to set Oxford up with good field position. They will begin this drive again in Laker territory at the 35-yard line. Reception is holding off return team 10 yards from the spot of the foul. As soon as I could say that, the referees decide, hey, we're going to move that back a little bit off of a penalty this time on Oxford. So both these teams getting bitten by the penalty bug tonight, but... Those bites a little bit more severe for West Bloomfield than for Oxford, who have been able to recover from that. Up 28 to 7, with 7.35 to go in the third period at West Bloomfield High School. Oxford will take over on their own 21 yard line. So instead of being at the Laker 35, they're going to go back to their 41 yard line in negative territory instead. That's where the Wildcats will begin this drive at the first down and a three score lead, looking to put this in a runaway. Their largest win of the season in week two against the defending champion Harper Woods, 38 to zero. Their second largest deficit, largest point margin in a victory was two weeks ago, their 28 to 10 win over Rochester High School on the road. Hendricks under center, handoff to Johnson. Tries to go inside the tackle and the guard to the right side, but not going to get much of anything as Caleb Parnell gets in on the tackle. Yeah, it looked like there might have been a bit of like a bobble on that snap right, or on that handoff right there on that exchange. Johnson, and the Lakers right there kind of catch a break if there was. If not, you know, they stuff them right there on first down, and give themselves an opportunity maybe to rush the passer on third. John Owens credited with the tackle wearing the number 68 tonight for West Bloomfield. As Oxford will move backwards one yard, it'll be second down and 11. <laughs> Hendricks outside, throws up the field overhead, outside the reach of, of his intended receiver, Katie, and a big stop for West Bloomfield. Yeah, really a huge incompletion right there in now a rare situation that Oxford hasn't been in all night, a third and long. Even bigger situation for the Laker defense because they've been going in the air with those penalties, moving them back. They have a chance to potentially force a punt, limit the amount of time that's come off the clock and still have this be somewhat within reach early on in the third quarter. So here's the answer. Third and 11 for the Oxford Wildcats. Hendricks in the shotgun. One man in the backfield, two split left. Hendricks looking, steps up, runs to his left side, looking toward the sideline, going to take it himself for a couple yards, going to get even more. He just needle threads through at the sideline in the boundary, 
gets to the line to gain and more for a first down. Yeah, really just a heartbreaker there for the Lakers on defense. You get, you get it to third and long. You get him off his platform. Nothing's open. Looks like you may be able to bring him down for a loss. And he scrambles for the first down. Now the junior quarterback making plays on the ground. Really impressive young man for Oxford who beat out his fellow upperclassman Eli Carpenter and recently graduated senior Ben Bruski for the job before last season. As they'll hand it off to Johnson, he'll get to the line of scrimmage, and then he'll be swallowed up by three Lakers who draw him back a yard, but with the forward progress, he will get back to the line of scrimmage. Brought down by uh, that is what the Lakers are going to have to do if they want to get back in this game, not just this drive, but the remaining drives that they're going to see the rest of this game. Benson and Owens, along with Tank Pittman, in on that tackle. Sets up second down and 10. With the forward progress, a gain of a couple of millimeters max on that first down run for Luke Johnson. Lakers down 28-7 to to Oxford in the third quarter. Final OAA Red game of the season on senior night at West Bloomfield High. Hendricks, play action, going to step up beyond the chasing Allos, up the field toward the sideline and just dropped in the air. Jay Cady had it. He was in front of the defensive back. Shakespeare had the ball in his hands, a little bit of contact after it hit his hands, but ultimately incomplete. And again, a third and long for Oxford, but this time in plus territory. You have really a perfect strike right there by Hendricks, and unfortunately, KD doesn't come down for it or with it. And now a third and long right here where you're the Lakers. You've almost gotten home to them the past two times they've passed it. Got to find a way to get, get to him here and bring him down. Ball is at the Laker 47 yard line on the, la on the left hash. Just beyond the top of the anchor. Can the Lakers anchor Oxford into a fourth down? With one in the backfield, Hendricks is in the shotgun. Snaps and rolls to his right outside the pocket. Looking up the field, it is caught at the 33 yard line and advancing forward. Skipping, spinning and getting a first down, down to the 20 for Jake Champagne. Yeah, again, once again, the Lakers are unable to get the stop on third down and force Oxford off of the field and just heartbreaking for the defense to get in those positions to finally get a stop and they're unable to make a stop on third and long. Focus and grit on display for these Wildcats. They've taken bad situations that have creeped up on them on the offensive side and found a way to make it work for them to continue advancing up the field as they're now in the red zone again with the ball on the right hash at the 20 yard line of West Bloomfield. Five minutes to play in the third quarter up 28 to seven are the Wildcats and pushing toward the Laker end zone. Hendricks, hand off to Johnson. Hook and ladder, flea flicker. Here comes Hendricks. He's getting chased. Tosses the ball forward and lost it on the ground. Ultimately up to the 31 yard line. A trick play for Oxford collapses into nothing. Yeah. It Looked like Johnson took a pretty nice hit right there on that initial handoff. But a very smart play right there by Hendricks to underhand that to make it an incomplete pass. It was a forward pass to an eligible receiver. We saw something similar early in the game from Bo Jackson getting the ball to Jeremiah Benson. That did not count. Johnson, of course, eligible. So that counts as a forward pass. And they say he dropped it, did not have full possession as he caught that at the 29. And so for Oxford, that'll set up the play again at the 20-yard line. Second down. Hendricks under center. One in the backfield is Luke Johnson. Johnson up the B gap to the left side, inside the tackle, and up to the 14-yard line. Yeah, that run right there is why it's all the more heartbreaking for this defense, probably. You finally get some stops on Luke Johnson. You're able to bring him down at the line of scrimmage a handful of times. Make it third and ten consecutive sets of series. And unfortunately, Hendricks burns you both times. Third and five for the Oxford Wildcats. Again in the red zone. They just got to get up to the 11-yard line. And they'll get a first down. Hendricks out of the shotgun with Johnson in the backfield. 
looking toward the right side. It is caught at the nine yard line, still on his feet before finally thrown out of bounds. Eli Carpenter gets the football. And now that they've got some, you know, got a bit of a lead and the Lakers are keying in on the run. Hendricks in this passing game showing a bit more of life, starting to get more of a flow to it, but a bit shocking that they're so willing to pass when they're already up 21 points. Mix things up, get vertical and Hey, that's going to help you run the football a little bit more because you got to get that second level, those linebackers. The nickel corners they keep out there. Get that second level moving backwards and set up that run. Two in the backfield, snap from Hendricks. Going to hand off to Johnson again to the five-yard line and nothing more. Still fighting for it, but ultimately not going to win that battle. Again, the Lakers starting to show a bit more life on run defense, but again, could be a little bit too late. It's now, even though they're starting to show some life in the run game, starting to show some leakage in the pass game. Second and goal, as you heard, at the Laker four-yard line for Oxford. They're going to take their sweet time, burn some clock here in the third quarter, up 28-7. to seven. A chance to make it a four-score game against the Lakers and spoiling that senior night at West Bloomfield High School. Same formation with two in the backfield. Hendricks will take it himself. Getting chased, running to his right side. Gonna get tripped up and go down. A sack for the Lakers as Jaden Allos gets there and wraps up the quarterback. Uh, we've seen Allos almost get in a few times tonight. That time he's able to bring him down. And really something that the Lakers haven't been able to really do that much tonight to Hendricks is get some guys around him, you know, put him in the dirt a little bit. And right there, a huge sack to take them out of the range of running it right here on third and goal. That's what you need. You want to keep Luke Johnson from being able to thread the needle, put his shoulder down, get physical, and get into the end zone. Hey, it's not just him. Andrew Barrett had a touchdown earlier on in this game also. Some weapons in the running game and in the passing game alongside a really good quarterback in the second season at the helm for Jack Hendricks. They still got a kicker, but hey, you want to prevent six on this drive as best as you can. Johnson will take it himself. Big gainer up to the 10, still on his feet, shifting inside to the nine, right at the numbers. It'll mean a bunch of Laker numbers, and they'll bring him backwards and stop that from going any further. Just a testament to how well Johnson's been running tonight. For a minute, it almost looked, you almost thought, is he going to get in right here? Is he going to somehow rush for 20 yards this play? Looks like there may be a penalty. Yeah, there, there is a flag. Flag is down in between the hashes, just inside the right hash at the 20 yard line. Bowling on the offense, 10 yard penalty. Previous spot remains third down. The Lakers will accept that penalty to move Oxford back. They will get to repeat that down, however. The ball is now going to be placed at the 28 yard line. So a calculated risk for Zach Hilbers there trying to force. Oxford back because now you're starting to approach that difficult territory for any kicker at this level as good as Drew Cady is and that's a guy who uh, has punted around 50 yards that can kick around 50 yards he's got the pedigree with his brother now kicking at GVSU so run it to Johnson he'll get up to the 25 up to the 20 still barreling forward pushing keeping his legs chopping up to the 18 and a 10-yard gainer will set up fourth down. Uh, he said he enjoyed those 10 yards that he had gained the previous play, and he wasn't going to let them be taken away from him. But again, it's incredible the way that Johnson has been able to run the ball tonight, and that run right there puts him right back into field goal range. As Drew Cady will come out for the field goal attempt in the Laker 18-yard line. So this well within Jay Cady's range from 28 to try to put them up 31-7. to seven. Should this split the uprights, that would be the case. Jonathan Corcoran will hold the football for the senior in the Oxford seven. One minute left in the third quarter. As the snap goes off, the kick goes up, and it splits the uprights 31-7. to seven. Now the score in favor of Oxford and West Bloomfield will try to again end the drought. They have not gotten on the, on the board since early on in this ball game in the first quarter when Jamal Shakespeare took the quarterback run into the end zone. Yeah, and really they've gotten away a little bit to an extent from the pat or run game, which, you know, considering the score they've had to, but 
they just haven't really been able to get a lot of momentum going on offense. And when they have, had, or they have, they've killed it with penalties. Thank you for tuning in across our social media as well on civiccentertv.com, on Facebook at Civic Center TV 15, and on YouTube at Civic Center TV. We'll also find plenty of other great programming from this week. Look, we're approaching election season. We want to meet some of the candidates on those ever critical local boards. We partnered with the League of Women Voters this week on their library board for West Bloomfield and the West Bloomfield School District Board of Education candidate forums. Also, some local celebrities and some business talk as Casey Crane and Roop Raj join the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce for their leadership luncheon. All of those available now on demand all across our network, including on civiccentertv.com. Another booming kickoff goes about eight yards into the Laker end zone. They'll begin at their 20 again off the touchback, a place that has been very familiar for this offense, starting drives on this Thursday evening at West Bloomfield High School. Maybe uh, cursed territory as we're in spooky, spooky season. Yeah, and really that is the best way to describe how this offense has looked tonight, scary in the bad sense. They haven't really been able to get anything going. They've looked ghoulish in the offensive front, not really able to get or create lanes for the running backs and not really able to protect the quarterbacks. The senior-laden Oxford Wildcats team really getting the pride from their head coach, Zach Line, who said to the Detroit News, the seniors have seen the good, the bad, and taken the good to build the foundation of this team. It's been on display tonight as they try to ruin the Lakers' senior night and undefeated streak this season at home. Under a minute to play in the third, down 31-7. Jackson screened the Devin Thomas, and he will go backwards a couple of yards on first down. Yeah, unfortunately, unable to get anything going after that. Looks like he stumbled after catching it. This Lakers offense really going back to really a lot of simple looks with these screens and handoffs because they can't really get much going downfield. 30 seconds and ticking to go in the third quarter. Lakers are down 31 to 7. After the first down, rush goes backwards. Second down and 12 at their 22 yard line on the left hash. Twins to either side for Bo Jackson. No snap. Jackson got a pocket looking to his right up the field. Tipped and just outside of the hands of Jake Champagne. That would have been a massive interception. Yeah, it looked like Tabert came away with that tip right there and it almost ended up in Champagne's hands. If it wasn't for Tabert, it looked like if that had hit Flowers, Flowers might have been gone on that one too, but a phenomenal play to get a hand on that pass and almost tip it to his teammate. Heads up move, getting in the air for the basketball star, Jake Champagne. The Lakers will try again on third and long. Shakespeare now in that quarterback. Oh, it's still Jackson looking to his right. Jackson up to the 20-yard line. Caught by Durham. will go forward to the 25. Move the chains for the Lakers. Jackson. And that big duo, 8-14, to 14, comes in handy and moves the chains. Finally, the Lakers escape their 20-yard line. Yeah, and, you know, they've got to find a way to keep on piling up first downs. As we close in on the fourth quarter, they got to get some points up on the board if they want any chance of coming back. Rolling clock. We're getting toward the end of the third with the Lakers down 31-7. to Jackson on first down. In the pocket, looking left up the field. Caught at the 48-yard line. Elijah Durham loses it. Out of his hands, it slides and into the hands of Eli Carpenter. And just like that, a magical play shifts the pixie dust over to Oxford and they will take over deep in their territory as we get to the end of the third. I believe that's Durham's third fumble on the year. And really all of them have been costly in a sense. This one, not as costly, but this one may really put an end to this game, even though it's slim chances as is. The way that Oxford's been moving the football Giving them the ball back at this juncture is just something the Lakers could not do. And that does bring us to the end of the third quarter at West Bloomfield High School. The Lakers trailing 31 to 7 with 12 minutes left in this ball game. And Oxford, 12 minutes away from guaranteeing themselves at least a shot at the share of the OAA Red Division title. And if Lake Orion does the same as they're currently doing to the Lakers tonight. On Friday, we could be seeing Oxford as the OAA Red Division champions. Been a while since we've been able to say that, and they have 
earned the right to be in the mix for that as all five teams in the red have coming into this week. Got a setup for a very interesting week. The Lakers have 12 minutes to make it interesting on senior night and try to extend the recovery we've seen the last couple of weeks and a different Lakers team, certainly last week against Lake Orion. And even the week before in Clarkston was signs of promise. As Hendricks begins the fourth quarter under center, hands it off to Johnson, gets back to the line of scrimmage with a fight forward again. He'll get up to about the 49 yard line at the end of that play, gets a second win by keeping those legs driving and advances forward. Yeah, it looked like he carried Vegas safe for about four or five yards on that play right there. Just again, a phenomenal game from Johnson. Just a testament to his toughness, the way he keeps his legs moving. It'll give him five off that first down rush up to the Laker 48 yard line. As Hendricks will come back from the sideline, getting the call from the coaching staff and talk it over with his Wildcats offense before they continue this drive. Do you split out short to the right side? A handoff to Hendricks. It is botched at the 45 yard line. He'll go forward to the 47. Will you lose a yard? Yeah, it looked like they kind of just bumped into each other before they could exchange it on that handoff right there. Now Johnson tackled right at the line of scrimmage, maybe, maybe losing a yard right there. Set up with another third down right here with the Lakers can hopefully get off the field. You could say Oxford's lucky to have lost one. You could also say West Bloomfield's lucky that they were able to make them lose one as Luke Johnson's escaped that earlier on in this game and turned that into eight, 10, 15 yards, couple of times. Not that time as it sets up third down and six. Johnson will come off the field. We'll have two split out to the right and one split out to the left. Hendricks takes the snap for the whistle, stops the play. Timeout, Oxford. Oxford wanted to talk that over, didn't like the alignment, didn't like the personnel either for them or what the Lakers were putting out there to match up. It didn't have their playmaker in, Jack's, in Jack Hendricks in the backfield there either. So nothing really to skip out of an audible out of for the Wildcats as they're up 31 to seven. And this is a critical juncture for the Lakers, not only if they want to have a chance to try to make a miracle comeback in this game, but also for those playoff point considerations, quality losses, close losses, those do play a factor in where you get placed come playoff time. Yeah, they can rattle off a few scores, get a few stops, and you know, it's three possessions at the end of the day. If they can force a turnover, they're scoring, if they can get a stop here, score and force a turnover, it's close again, just like that. The Lakers next week will take the show back out on the road for the final two weeks of the season, beginning at currently the 6-0 Seahome Maples, who will go to North Farmington for a road matchup against the 4-2 North Farmington Raiders on Friday night. Then after that, West Bloomfield will head back out on the road against Roseville. Next week's game, the prep is going to broadcast. That will give you updates throughout the week on our broadcast as Hendricks takes the snap. Throws it outside for a first down and more. Up past the 40 and toward the 30-yard line, Eli Carpenter with a huge reception. Yeah, Carpenter just carving out a nice gain for himself right there on that catch. And again, this Lakers defense has just struggled to tackle so far today. And that's just an issue that going forward, they cannot allow or they will not win many games come November. It's much a testament to these wide receivers too, because they've been able to also be physical in their limited opportunities today as we've seen so much of this offense for Oxford beyond the ground. The Lakers able to make tight coverage for these wide receivers, but they get physical, they get after it. I mean, Owen Pavlock's a pretty big receiver. Jake Champagne is 6'3 and 170 pounds. Liam O'Neal, 5'11, 180. So we have 10 minutes to go in the ball game. Hendricks handoff out to the right side. Back to the line of scrimmage and not much more for Seth Tabert as he takes the second down ball. Yeah, Tabert right there getting a rare carry instead of Johnson. And he just does what really all Oxford is looking to do at this point is fall forward and not get tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Ultimately, we'll get just one on that play. We have not seen Luke Johnson since 
just before the Wildcats went in the plus territory, perhaps preserving their star running back as they were up 31 to seven, just a couple of minutes in to the fourth and final period of this ball game. Three split out to the left for the Wildcats. Hendricks will hand the ball off again to Tabert up to the 25 yard line, bashed, but he still is on his feet and moves forward inside the fifth, inside the 25 to the 22. Yeah, looking like he's going to be about a yard, maybe half a yard short of that first down marker, but another phenomenal run by the Oxford offense, and this offensive line is just moving people, getting out in space, and so far, I mean, it's just incredible to see how dominant they have been. Tabert, the six foot 180 junior, now in it, running back, and the primary back on these last three plays for Oxford. It's a nice chunk gainer there to bring it to second and short less than a yard from the line to gain as oxford again approaches the red zone up 31 to 7. hendricks under center with tabert in the backfield they'll hand it off to him again he'll take it inside the 20 up to the 15 approaching the 10 and tackled by three lakers down at the 12 yard line shakespeare in on that corey pittman in on that as well but seth tabor gets another big run and moves the chains for the Oxford Wildcats down to the Laker 13. Yeah, and this could just be the bow on the ribbon right now, or bow on the, or bow for Oxford right now, just to put the end to the game. They're dominating right now in the run game without Johnson in after having him gash the Lakers all day. It's a 31 to seven ball game, less than eight minutes to play in this contest between the Lakers and the Wildcats in West Bloomfield on senior night. Two split out to either side with Tabert and Barrett in the backfield for the quarterback Hendricks. He'll hand that ball off to Tabert and he'll immediately be met in the backfield and tossed to the ground. Gets a wrap on the shoulders and Jeremiah Benson pulls the running back to the ground. Yeah. A phenomenal play by Benson right there to bring him down near the line of scrimmage. Again, Lakers still in a spot where if they can force a turnover and somehow get some big plays, it's not over, but time is ticking. Lakers playing on Thursday night this week because of the holiday, as are the Birmingham Seaholm Maples. They're currently down 23 to 24 against North Farmington. Hendricks is under center, one in the backfield and split out to either side. He'll take it to his right side, getting chased by Benson, looking up the field toward the end zone. It is caught just before by Jake Champagne, and he rolls in for six. Uh, and really, this fourth quarter, Hendricks has been phenomenal, and he just delivers a strike right there to Champagne to cap off. Phenomenal drive right there for Oxford without their star player. Just right now, the Lakers have had no answer for this Oxford offense today. Makes it a 37 to seven ball game in favor of the Wildcats have a chance to go up 31 with the PAT, just four points outside of the mercy rule range. Not unfamiliar for West Bloomfield at home this season, but unfamiliar when it's looking them in the eyes. As Katie kicks the PAT for another extra point and does, in fact, make it a 38-7 ball game. So now for West Bloomfield, a little bit different of a situation, down several scores with under 10 minutes to play in this ball game. Not looking very likely that you can come back, not necessarily impossible. We've seen them come back from massive leads like this in past seasons. You think about last year on the road against the Clarkston Wolves, but seeing eye test tells you a lot. Unlikely that's going to be the case tonight. So... A, like we talked about earlier on, playing to make a closer matchup, more competitive matchup, helps you in the playoff points, but also just trying to end that drought on the offensive side, the penalty bug, the mistakes, the discipline issues that you've seen rear their ugly heads tonight. That's what this drive and the rest of this game really is about for West Bloomfield. Correct the final minutes of this to give yourself a little bit of positive momentum in the midst of all of this that's happened tonight as you head in with a long week before you go on the road to see home. Yeah, really, and you just want to see some life in the offense, like you said, and get some momentum going on offense before playing two phenomenal teams. 
Drew Cady will kick it off again from just inside the middle hash at the 40-yard line by a few feet. Line drive, and it's got distance on it over the head of Flowers and Durham, five yards into the end zone for another touchback. Yeah, and really, the Lakers have been all too familiar with the 20-yard line today, like we've mentioned, that you know, they haven't been able to pick up these first downs. They've been going three and out really since their second and third drives. And they've got to find a way to get some life on offense. Thank you for tuning in to Laker football again on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Additionally, on the Facebook page of the West Bloomfield School District and on their TV channel, WBTV. You can always find us also online on CivicCenterTV.com with plenty of other original programming like the Splash Live and helpful programs from across the community on demand right now as we speak. Tune on in right after the game is over tonight. Shotgun snap to Bo Jackson from the 20. Getting chased, thrown in contact, and caught up to the 30-yard line for a first down. He made that pass with driving contact coming toward him as he was getting hit. He gets that ball out and throws it forward to Flowers. Yeah, another tight window throw to Flowers right there. This time they're able to connect, and hopefully, you know, the Lakers can show some something on offense right here, get some momentum going, and have some things to work on going into next week. And that time, no penalty on that big gainer. Sets the Lakers up with a first down at their 31. Down 38-7 to seven late in the fourth quarter in this ball game. Jackson gets hit on the, in the pocket but gets it to James. He gets up to the 35, to the 40 as he goes inside, still fighting for it. He gets a lot on that play. That, that turned into something nice out of a potential sack. Bo Jackson, a heads-up play, gets it to 88, and Devin James continues to be a playmaker for the Lakers as he advances to the 40. Yeah, really a phenomenal job to get that throw off by Jackson, knowing that he is going to take a hit on that. Advances the Lakers to the 40-yard line, got to get up to the 42 for a first down, second and two. Handoff. Tate going to take it up for a first down to Moore. Still on his feet. Past the 50 to the 48. Josh Tate moves the chains, and finally we get a nice play from three after he's had a rough go of it tonight with this Oxford defensive front. Yeah, really, that's the one thing that the Oxford team has done after that opening drive to stop this Lakers offense is stopping Josh Tate and putting all the pressure on the passing game. Lakers advance into plus territory, not exactly been familiar for them in the second half tonight, or really since that first period. First down to 47. Pass outside, screen the James, gonna go up to the 42 yard line or so. We'll, we'll mark him out of bounds at the 43. Yeah. This Oxford unit is just flying to the football and it's really why they haven't been able to get much going in the passing game. Even when guys have seldomly been able to get open downfield, they have two or three defenders on them right as they catch it. Second and six with five minutes left to play in this ball game. West Bloomfield down 38 to seven on senior night against against the Wildcats of Oxford. Two split out to the short side right for Jackson. Low snap on the shotgun. Looking up the field and it is caught at the 33 yard line. That'll advance the Lakers forward and move the chains. Jackson's pass complete to Allos. Allos, the receiver on that play, again pulls it in. He has been a key receiver for the Lakers tonight. It's really been Durham and Allos with a little bit of Jaden, a little bit of Cameron Flowers peppered into the mix. And what's been a limited offensive game for the Lakers against the stout Wildcat defense. In 38, Jackson out of the shotgun, looking up the field. Gets it to the 21-yard line. Durham past the 20, into the red zone, down to the 15, and lands at the 14 with the reach. Jackson's pass complete. Yeah, a really nice job coming out of that catch right there by Durham and accelerating. That's one route this year that so far both Jackson and Durham have a lot of chemistry on is that, you know, that in-breaking curl route. Unfortunately, same route that that fumble came on, but the Lakers offense has had a lot of success in the past game on that route this year. Lakers going to keep this moving at the 19-yard line. First down and 10. Jackson with one in the backfield. In the pocket, looking up the field. Inside the five. It is caught by Flowers. to land the four as he's tackled at the end of that catch. Right away, he is met 
and he is taken down by Chase Cardona. And, and now the Lakers in prime position to just hand this ball off to Tate, and hopefully he's able to get in the end zone this play, but at least pick up the first down. From the four-yard line of the Wildcats, Jackson will do just that. Hands it off, up the middle, and into the end zone. A touchdown for Joshua Tate, his ninth on the season. Yeah, you know, much needed touchdown for this Lakers offense. You know, puts a stop to the bleeding a little bit. You know, they're not going to win the game. They needed to show some success on offense in the second half after not really getting anything going at all. Continues to expand his touchdown lead offensively for the Lakers. Nine on the season. His first tonight as he fouled up an impressive game last week where he had four trips to pay dirt for the Lakers in that 49-41 win against Lake Orion. Tonight makes it a little bit more even, but not by much. 38-13, to the current score as Justin Ward comes out for his second PAT of the evening and splits the upright with three minutes and some change left in this ball game. It is 14 to 38 in favor of the Oxford Wildcats. Some positives for the Lakers, their first trip to the end zone since the first quarter. And now they got a chance to make some plays on the defensive side and maybe give this offense one more chance at evening out the score and maybe earning a little bit more in that playoff point consideration coming out of this game. Yeah, if they're able to get a stop right here get the ball back and score it will definitely help their playoff points but I mean it's just very unfortunate the showing that the Lakers had tonight unable to really put a stop to the run game at any point and really unable to develop anything in the run game on their end. Justin Ward will kick it off from the 40 yard line they'll put a dead center in between the hashes as the Lakers prepare on the defensive side with a little bit over three minutes to play in this ball game, down 38 to 14 at this juncture. And he will line up for an onside kick, try to give the Lakers every chance they can possibly have. Ward high, lands inside the 50. It is recovered and it is downed at the 45 yard line as Liam O'Neill downs it. That earns Oxford that offensive drive, approaching plus territory. And it looks like Johnson will not be taking the carries again at running back. See him jogging off to the sideline. So his looks like his day is done and we'll be getting more Tabert carries, but the Lakers defense definitely is going to need to show some signs of life here in the run game again, knowing that it's a backup running back. As we talked about earlier on, a chance to correct some of the mistakes from earlier on tonight, refocus and come back in with two weeks left in the season and still plenty left for these Lakers to play for as they go on the road next week to see home and then Roseville two weeks out. First down dropped by the quarterback in the backfield. They'll go back to the 40 yard line and a loss on first down for Hendricks and company. So the Lakers get a little bit of, of luck on the loss of five. We've seen a few bobbled handoffs and exchanges so far today by Hendricks. That one right there cost Oxford five yards, but really considering the score, it's not that consequential. Friendly placement puts the ball at the 41 yard line. So it'll be second down and 14 for the Oxford Wildcats as Hendricks gets a discussion from the sideline with the coaching staff for the play, gets back to the huddle. After the sack, of course, rolling clock, give them the benefit of Taking some time off the scoreboard and getting closer to a big victory in West Bloomfield. With two in the backfield, Hendricks hands it off. Here's Tabert up to the 45, and he'll get forward to the 50. An impressive run again for the junior Tabert, who's had some tough shoes to fill coming in for Luke Johnson in the fourth quarter. Yeah, a lot like a lot of the runs that we saw from Johnson earlier. They lose, they maybe lose a few yards before, but then. They get them all back the next play with the carry. Tabert does exactly that. Picks up about 10 yards on that carry. Makes it a third and five. Tip of the football just up on the 50-yard line with two minutes and ticking to play in this contest. And it'll be third down and five for the Oxford Wildcats. Hendricks will hand it off to Tabert again to the line of scrimmage. And one, maybe two more with forward progress. They'll give him one to set up a, a fourth down and four. Timeout. 
Yeah, I mean, considering the score, obviously going to punt right here. No reason to go for it. And now the, the Lakers are going to get a chance maybe to put some more points up on the board now, considering the field position. Yeah, they did take a timeout after that third down to preserve the clock a little bit and give this offense a chance to try once again to get toward the end zone, maybe get six points at least, put them in a, chance, in a position to get three as they're trailing 38 to 14 with under two minutes to play in this ball game. The Lakers not going to win tonight. They will they will ultimately fall to three and four on the season and finish one and three in the OAA Red Division out of the running for the OAA Red Division Championship. Oxford will advance to five and two and three and one in the OAA Red, which means the Red comes down to Clarkston and Lake Orion on Friday night. If Lake Orion comes away with that victory. Oxford will be your regular season champions in the OAA Red Division. And if Clarkston wins that game, it will be a share of the OAA Red with both Clarkston and Oxford finishing the season 3-1 and one in the OAA Red Division. But first, the fourth down for the Wildcats. They bring the offense back out. Drew Cady not lined up for the punt, but rather at wide receiver as Coach Hilbers is standing on the 5 of the 50-yard line. Talking things over with the referee just above the football and now with the side judge as he'll ultimately make his way back to the sideline. Hendricks under center. Lakers do ultimately jump. They try to get him to go. And just a little bit inside Defense. the neutral zone. It's going to be a five-yard penalty just like that. A fourth down turns into a first down for the Oxford Wildcats. That moves up to the 44-yard line. That's exactly why they kept that offense on the field, test out the discipline, test out the fortitude. If you get a first down just like that, you're preventing any further points for going toward the Lakers. Look, both these teams are playing for playoff position. You win 38-14. to 14. If you're Oxford, it's a lot better for your playoff positioning than if you win 38-21. to 21. 38 to 17. Now first down from the Laker 45. Hendricks under center, handoff right up the gut. Up to the 25, 35 yard line and now up to the 34. A handoff, another different running back coming in for Oxford there as Preston Wilder takes the pick skin. Yeah, Preston Wilder picking up a good chunk of yards on that first down carry right there. Moves the sticks and once again, the Lakers just not having any counter for this run game. Much like Hendricks a year ago, Preston Wilder, a sophomore standout on this varsity squad, upgraded this season. A few years ago was the MVP of the Oxford Gold 7th grade team back in 2021 in their undefeated 6-0 season. Just a few years later, oh how the times changed. Three years later, he is on the varsity squad getting some late game handoffs. At West Bloomfield High School as Oxford's looking to pick up another big win, this time on the road. Unfamiliar for OAA Red teams getting a road victory in 2024. Under center, Hendricks hands it off again to Wilder, pushes forward past the 30. And still fighting, gets a good push toward the 25 before the Lakers bring him backwards. One minute left to play in this ball game. Uh, and Oxford about two yards away from the first down, second down this game, about two carries away from being over, and again, the Lakers just unfortunately not showing enough fight in the trenches to get the one here tonight. That and a lot of fight from this offensive line, loaded with talent at Oxford High School. The youngest player on that line is their left tackle, their blindside tackle, Liam Samborski, a sophomore. Everybody else on that O-line, a senior, Luke Kusick, the left guard, center, Liam Carr. Right guard, Brendan Cass, and right tackle, Nolan Cumbie for the Wildcats up 38 to 14. Late in this ball game at West Bloomfield High School, a senior night gone awry for the Lakers. As Oxford jumped out to a seven nothing lead early, West Bloomfield answered, and then it was all Oxford until just a few minutes ago here in the fourth quarter. And it's still all Oxford. Under center, Hendricks with one in the backfield. We'll hand it off again up to the 25-yard line. And a couple yards extra 
for Oxford there, advances toward the line to gain, and they will give them a first down. And again, just moving the sticks at will, even at this point in the game, their backups in, just a very dejected looking Lakers defense at this point. Well, that time it was again Luke Johnson getting another opportunity on the field, maybe just giving him some rest, but then having him come in on some of those key plays. 45 seconds left to go as Oxford gets in the victory formation. Hendricks takes the knee, no timeout from the Lakers, and that's where they will begin their celebration. The Oxford Wildcats going to call this game final. 14 for the West Bloomfield Lakers and 38 for Oxford as both teams will head toward midfield to shake hands and end the OAA Red Division season. And now it all comes down to Lake Orion and Clarkston to decide who's going to be the champion of this ever competitive division. And that perhaps the silver lining for the Lakers is the competition you go up against in the OAA Red puts you in position with the wins you have picked up this season and the win against Lake Orion last week for playoff time. But you got to pick up one of these last two to really put yourself in halfway decent position in the postseason. Yeah, really just an unfortunate performance here for the Lakers. Hats off to Oxford for just how physical and determined of a football team they are. You can tell just how detailed they work at practice, and they are definitely going to make some noise in the playoffs. Attention to detail, that discipline, that development. Bend the key for Zach Line in his fifth season at the helm. At his alma mater, a graduate of Oxford in 2008, played four years of college ball at SMU before an NFL career where he was an undrafted free agent. He played with the Minnesota Vikings and the New Orleans Saints. Tonight, some inspiration for his team as he's coached them back to prominence in the OAA Red. 14 for the Lakers and 38 for the Oxford Wildcats. The rest of the season for the Wildcats coming up, they go to o they go home to Oak, play Oak Park and Macomb, Dakota over the next two weeks. For the Lakers, the rest of the regular season is on the road. Birmingham Seaholm, who's in active game action tonight against North Farmington is going to be the matchup next week. Friday night, seven o'clock kickoff. We'll do our best to be on coverage of that on TV or on radio. We do know that the prep will be covering that game. I did get that confirmed from the athletic director at Seaholm next week. So we'll keep you updated on our coverage. And then two weeks from now, the Lakers go to Roseville to cap off the regular season. Plenty more to play for, and I'll have plenty to talk to head coach Zach Hilbers about on this week in Laker football. Check for that early on next week right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM as the Lakers once again go toward the scrum after a tough OAA Red Division game that ended in a loss. Ultimately, that is where... They will finish tonight, 14 to 38, a loss to the Oxford Wildcats, and that's where we will conclude our broadcast as well. Big thank you to our entire crew, Calvin Brown at Master Control at Civic Center TV on site, alongside Matt Catoni and I, Jared Clark and Dom Catoni on the controls and on our crew on site. For the entire team at Civic Center TV and our friends at the West Bloomfield High School Athletic Department, alongside Matt Catoni, I'm Tyler Keith saying good night from West Bloomfield High School.